all we ask is that you be 18 or over to join. Yes, exact come. Come, come, child. <laughs> Whoa, that sounds, whoa, that's no, 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 whoa, no, phrasing, no, no, phrasing, no, 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 no. phrasing. Hold on. You can't help yourself, can you? You really can't. <sighs> that was on me. I'm sorry. <laughs>and welcome to episode number 45 of ACAT's WTF series a chance for us to get together live and talk about it's things case, outside the mask what I have a case on mask the oh you actually do have merch. a case on mask yeah uh anyway a chance for us to get together to talk about things outside the anime world and to talk about things that have been on our minds and answer your questions from discord I'm your host Alex but you can call me senpai and I am joined tonight by our czar of source material John I want to put these on my nice, car, but I don't nice want stickers. to be cringe weed, you know? Oh, like, dude, I got a line. A, I got an Ena sticker on my car. It's cringe. fine. There is Embrace a line between, like, how much I want to show that I'm cringe and a line where I'm just like, you know what? That's too much. <laughs> I mean, John, it's not VTuber specific, but... I have the platelet the... hat. Yeah, the platelet hat. <laughs> it's the platelet hat from Cells at Work. <laughs> your hat looks so dumb when it's on your top of the headphones. <laughs> I know it's, <laughs> it's not great. He's not trying, great. John. Oh my God. He's trying. <laughs> um, I have and we also ha that, hold on. We oh also have God. our poster God. extraordinary in the title. Let me finish the intro. God damn it! I'm Kenuff. <laughs> yes, Kenuff. you are. You are Kenuff. And uh, I'm good at stuff. <laughs> freaking Ken's ultimate dojo, brojo, whatever. Freaking house. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's ultimate Dude. dude pad brojo dojo. What would, Ken, so what would Ken's stand name be? I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. Think about it. I, I I don't want to think about it. Oh wait, but... that's easy. Uh, what's their name? What was their name? Um, what was it? Was it Aqua? Aqua did Barbie Girl. Yeah. 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 Aqua. Yeah. I was gonna say Plastic Memories, but <laughs> Plastic uh, Memory. But. So Natai, your hair is blonde. It's it's very noticeable. Um, do you want to tell people very why bright. it's blonde? So it was for uh, a bit. So it, <laughs> yeah, I wish it was for a bit. He's not no, that dedicated. <laughs> so uh, so a good friend of mine uh, arranged a small like party at his house for like Purim, it's the uh, holiday where we dress up in cosplays, pretty much. And for this year, like. We, it was kind of very last minute because we weren't sure if we we're gonna go or not. But the idea we we're talking about me and uh, my girlfriend were like costumes about like anime characters. So sh she had this idea that I'll dress up as Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen. So I dyed my hair for it. And were you working overtime? I was working overtime. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he, that's when he's the uh, the toughest, you know. Which, by the way, if you actually want to see... Well, actually, did you post it publicly in our Discord server or not? I didn't post it publicly, no. I don't think I know I you did. posted it in our private channel. I don't remember seeing it there. So I was going to say, if you want to see what it looks like, join our Discord server. But you can't because it's in a private channel. I can look... I can, I can post it in my channel, I guess, yeah. So I went as Nanami. My girlfriend went as uh, Makima from Chainsaw. She got a wig, though. She didn't dye her dye hair. Her I hair. thought it was a fun... Yeah, I thought it would be fun, though. He, he, hey, he was dedicated to the bit. He was he was yeah. way dedicated to the bit. Um, you need the suit and a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, it's um, in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we get into um, our Discord questions for this month's WTF, I, I do want to say uh, first of all, thank you for those of you who are joining us live. Um, and uh, if you are watching live or if you're watching the VOD on uh, Monday when this comes out, be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more. And also, if you are not a member of our Discord server and you want to ask us questions, there is a link to join down below. All we ask is that you be 18 or over to join. Yes, exact come. Come, come, child. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, that sounds, whoa, no, no, whoa, no, no, phrasing, no, 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 phrasing. No, 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 no. phrasing. Hold on. You can't help yourself, can you? You really can't. That was on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not consider the phrasing before that came out of my mouth. I really should have. Damn, mm. like like the amount of, of 
I'm blinded by the face. balls on this kid. He's <laughs> blinded by the balls on this kid. That's out like now that we know that he's a piece of shit, that line has so much worse meaning. Uh, it's a uh. shame Kim is basically now ruins everything he's in because you know he's a piece of shit. It, it's a great the greater shame is he's a damn good actor. He's a great actor. Um but yeah, uh, there's a whole channel on our Discord server where you can ask us questions that appear here monthly on our WTF. So uh, if you're not already a member of our Discord server, link down below uh, to join it. Uh, so the first question that uh, we're going to ask uh, from our Discord server this month is coming from Classy. I love the fact that he's changed his name on our Discord server from Classy Ulysses to Classy the Milf Hunter. What a great nickname. Nice. Uh, have you seen what he posts in the S not safe for work channels? Yes, I have, and uh, man oh has earned God. the title. Yeah, he's definitely earned the title. Uh, but asked, uh, do you think that without fan service in air quotes, anime would exist as it currently is? No, no. I kind of yeah. I, I... so let me let me articulate. Okay, I say no because. I learned that a lot of the beach episodes and the fan service episodes that we get inside of anime is actually a sneaky way to put in filler and give the workers on the either the manga or the uh, anime a break. That's mm -hmm. why they sneak those in because it's like you don't have to think about it. It's a beach episode. It's purely fan service and it's here for just consume because this week we need a break. <laughs> So Some that's why I say uh, beach episodes are in the manga, though, or original source material. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying because it's in the manga as well because they needed a break that week. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Animators and they're break. easy to draw too, usually yeah. because the backgrounds are pretty simple for beach episodes. It's a way oh, morning, for Jacob. the creators. Um, I just got coffee. Why? Why is the tie Ken? <laughs> Oh, see, this is what happens when you go to bed drunk. Uh, you just wake up and people are blonde. It just happens sometimes. You wake up and you're Ken, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you are Ken of. You're Ken of. But... Sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. But yeah, my my point of view about like the whole beach episode, right? Whether in the manga and and or in the anime, I learned that it's just a break for the people creating the content. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anime would be where it's at today if they didn't get those breaks. So there'd be a lot more burnout. People would be hating their works a lot more. So that's like more yeah. of a long answer to it. Also, I think it just, you know, anime is really fucking weird because inherently it will be because it's originated from Japan. And some of that mm -hmm. stuff is just like part of the culture around it and part of the almost identity. Like you go back to literally you have the guy next bounce like these are a bunch of nerds making anime and they add these silly little fan service moments because it's kind of like, well, what's what they like, you know, and it, it's so ingrained to the culture of anime. I don't think it would be this. It would be anime if it wouldn't have it. Right. Right. Also, to answer Classy Ulysses in the chat. Uh, yes, I think we all enjoy the posts of all the MILFs you put in our is there, Discord server. Is there a pattern? Is, is there a certain MILF he comes back to every now and then? Yeah, Hinata. Yeah, from Naruto. <laughs> Excellent. I, Excellent. I mean, I'm not gonna. Hey, it's good taste, man. It's it's great taste. Um, but yeah, I I I agree with John. Like, it, I still think that anime would like exist, but maybe it it would be different without that fan service because it does serve to give animators and artists just a break. I don't know, and it depends on what you mean by fan service too, because like fan service is could be defined as anything that the fans Bro, want. It's not anime if a ma if a character doesn't like fucking fall over and show her panties to some dude, you know. Sorry, in every single every single in every like, single anime, one. there needs to be one scene at least where that happens. <laughs> I just like it's like the dude who was it was I think he was a Muslim dude and he accidentally ate some shawarma during Ramadan when he was supposed to be fasting and he's like I fell and the shawarma went in my mouth. <laughs> it's like yeah, dude, <laughs> this is not anime. I promise you, it did not happen that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it, like I said, it, I think it depends on what you mean by fan service, like. Fan service can just mean your favorite character returning. It's what the fans I think want. With anime, there's a very certain tie-ins. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah, but I, it, the general term in for anime, you, mean, there's a context for fan yeah. Service the the general term of fan yeah. service that we use in our context is it's the beach episode. It's the episode that all the people who ranked highly in the ranking popularity contest in that week's jump or whatever is mm -hmm. in this episode to show them yeah. off because that just and scantily every... clad clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fuck fuck bikini fan series. <laughs> Give me giant robots. I don't care. The slice of life cooking show. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> you know, I fair enough. I personally feel that. I think that if you insert giant robots into any show, regardless of genre, it's just instantly better. Goran Logan, true, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Goran if Logan, I added more example. robots, it would have been way that, better. That one, that one had that one a banger beach episode, and you know it. It does. Oh my god. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because she's fourteen. But oh my god. <laughs> oh, not that. Oh my. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Uh, 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 listen, the fan I service was fourteen I used... when she was fourteen, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fan service I'm used to is nostalgia. Nostalgia can be another type of fan service. Yeah. Um, like appealing to nostalgia, whether it's in writing or like a character from an old series returning in a new series, like that—that's kind of fan service too. All I hear um, now is just like the member barriers from South Park. Like, member, member Star Wars, member. Man, they were so ahead remember? of their time. It's it's yeah. kind of eerie how right they got it with the fucking member berries. I mean, look at some of the stuff that's coming out now, like all the remakes and shit, like the Ghostbusters thing, right? Like that's all just member berries. Member Ghostbusters, I member. I remember. I think it they was, were uh, ahead of their time. It's, uh, trends are cyclical. It's like every thirty years, things repeat. Or yeah, something like, that. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kimi no Nawa Gundam. Kimi no, Nawa oh, Gundam. no. Yeah, Michael Keaton in the the new Flash movie. Yeah, like as Batman. Like that's literally just. Berries. It's appealing to nostalgia. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the 1989 Batman movie. Like, Michael Keaton, to me, is Batman. But did he need That's to no be in that movie? Being in the first Flash no. movie. Yeah. It's... I, I will you. say. Adam West has been the titular Batman, live-action <laughs> Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I will, I will say, Michael Keaton has aged incredibly well. Um, he looks pretty good for being in his, what, 70s? <laughs> is he 70? I think he's in his early 70s, and he still looks like he's in his, like, late 40s. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was, like, that Crazy. was pure nostalgia bait. And, like, it, it worked. It got people into the theaters to see it, I guess. No, it didn't. Nobody went and watched fucking The Flash. It bombed. Did they? I yeah. don't know. I don't keep up it with this It bombed. Shit. No, it I mean, didn't I, work, I, I don't know. I don't keep up with, with superhero shit. Yeah, late 60s, early 70s. He still looks great for that age. Um, 2010s were remembering the 80s, and 2020s is remembering the 90s. Yeah, like so they have that that show, um, uh, that 90s show, right? Which is uh, a sequel show. to that 70s show. Oh, the the 90s now are to the the in the 90s is when the, that 70s show came out, and we are as far now removed from the 90s as that 70s show was removed from the 70s in the 90s. I will argue that that. That 90s show sucks. Um, <laughs> because it, has it no sucks reason to exist. It has no, so the thing is, it's created because, like, you know, Boy Meets World got a, a, a sequel, I guess. Um, Girl yeah, Meets Girl World, Meets I think World. it is. It's about his daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, Topanga's still hot. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> bro. Listen, Operation Banga Topanga is on, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> talk about a MILF, anyway. Um, Let's see, what else did they continue? Very that was spicy talking? episode, fellas, yeah. Yeah. There is another show. Oh, That's So Raven. That got a sequel as well. Uh, yeah. Raven show, I think. Nah, that was different, though. Cory in the House was like, I mean, that at least came out like a year after That's So Raven ended, you know? It wasn't like a nostalgia bait. No, Cory, not Cory in the House. That's So Raven has an actual sequel where it's about Raven. Called King. The Raven Show or The Raven Simone Whatever Show or something like that. Yeah. No, That's So Raven and the sequel was Cory in the House. No, that's but there is another sequel. It's not a sequel. That's There's a another one? Yes. Yes. Yes, Raven Simone. What? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, 20 years later, there's a new show that's a direct sequel to That's a Raven. Because Cory in the House oh was a spinoff. Cory in the House is not anything but right. it's a spinoff. Yeah. So, like... The best anime. Finally, you guys are talking about peak anime. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
yeah, there's this huge trend in shows getting sequels and stuff that no one asked for because it's I I don't know I guess or reboots or remakes. Yeah, people just I guess were like, hey, it's gonna probably oh, be the funny. fucking iCarly um, reboots. Uh, so not with weird. all the new allegations, Dan Schneider. <laughs> Dan Schneider, God damn Dan it, Dan Schneider Sch- at it again. God damn did, it. Did you see? Did you see the uh, the broadcast schedule that Nintendo released after that documentary dropped? Because they got rid of all the Dan Schneider produced shows that they were showing on Nickelodeon, and it's all SpongeBob. The entire broadcast lineup is just SpongeBob now. Seriously? So, have you guys yeah. seen Quiet on Set? Have you guys watched I have the not seen yet? it yet, yeah, but, but I've, I've seen it. people talk about it. Okay, I, I just watched it. it like a couple of days ago. So Is it good? I will say well, I think that um watching the the thing I learned watch quite a lot. Sorry to interrupt. Uh you can watch it on Max. It's streaming on Max right now. If you have Max. HBO Max. VPN it is. <laughs> <laughs> um but basically it it goes over a lot of Dan Schneider's growing up and stuff. And my main takeaway from this entire situation of watching that is like I do not think that Dan Schneider is a pedophile. Um, I, I do not. Really. Yeah, I definitely do not think Dan Schneider is a pedophile. I think he's a. I think he's a piece of garbage because Creeper. it's. Well, the thing is, his entire way that he's interacted, like you know, from his story growing up, um, you know, he was a fat kid. His parents didn't expect much from him. I can definitely tell that when he became such hot shit, he was king of the castle that went to his head like the fact oh, that he for would sure. yeah when he asked all the uh the makeup or the dressing up people the art people like to give him massages like as a joke but then would enforce it and he's very misogynistic at work i think that he was like he he finally got to be the jock he got to be king of the castle and he's taking all of that power and just being like oh look what i can do like i can That's literally make shot. or break you yeah cuz it's yeah. like it's a power tripping asshole and i i you know unfortunately i don't think that's anything unique Sorry, Dan Schneider, you're not fucking special. Um, it's certainly not unique in Hollywood. Shit. Yeah, uh, like all the feet allegations aside, like it was weird. I think all the feet <laughs> things were fucking weird. I really do. However, I think Dan Schneider did those things because he thought it'd be humiliating for the women to perform. I truly yeah. believe that he did it. So, to do you think he's a misogynist them. at least? I think that he is a misogynist. Yes, uh, I think he's a piece of shit. Again, power trip and asshole. But I don't think that he did any of the weird stuff because he wanted to be, like, sexualizing these kids. I think he did it because he felt power over them. That he wanted to make them do these funny things. Where, Sometimes like, those I'm... things overlap, you know? Like, there is yeah, over, they... like... I would say that, but, like, the way that he... So, when you watch uh, Quiet on Set, it actually... Mm-hmm. Um, Drake Bell makes an appearance, and he talks about his uh, being sexually assaulted. Oh, shit, uh, really? Yeah, he was molested by... Um, brian peck the speech coach or something i think it was script coach or something oh, for a lot so of the fun. dialogue coach. coach dialogue coach so he comes out and he's like yeah i was like assaulted i you know I, and it was so fucked up dude it was so hard to listen to this i was like oh my god like holy shit i mean it's and still fucked up it, what he did to that to that like uh fan so many years later but still that's that's really shitty i i looked more into that dude so Oh, real, really? Yes, I looked Wasn't into that an the open whole... and shut case. It was. He pled guilty, so he was never convicted of anything. He's not on a list or anything, right? So the thing was, I thought he was. No, he pled guilty. He he pled, I think, no contest or something. I don't remember what he actually pled, but point is, he was charged with um explicitly like endangering a minor because he was like expl- texting them explicitly or something, right? Okay. But the thing is. He didn't know this person was a minor. According to their DMs, because they, they have all of it in court, she mm-hmm. said she was 18. She fucking lied. Really? And, yes. And the minute that he found out that she wasn't 18, he said, okay, well, talk to me when you turn 18. And that's kind of what fucked him up. That, if he yeah, if he never sent that fun. last text, he would have not been charged with anything. That Just should have cut it off though. right there. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, well, like now that you know that she's a minor, you should be like, you know, as an ounce of professionalism, and be like, you know what, uh, this is making me a lot uncomfortable. Like, I did not know that, and as a uh, fucking, we're parting ways. As a fucking responsible adult. <laughs> as a yeah, once you learn that this person is someone under the age, you know, don't fucking go like, well, you know, I still, I don't take back what I said at all. Uh, just call me when you're 18. Like, that's kind of creepy, bro. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
like the whole I'm I mean, gonna wait for you to turn 18 like it's so creepy so that's why he uh pled guilty or no contest to the charges of like child endangerment and this and that and he only got like i don't know 150 hours like community service or something because he was like look i didn't know she was eight well some because... people ended their careers over shit like that well yeah. the thing is he owned up to it he was like look i said what i said i didn't know her age but that doesn't make it any less wrong and you know i could have handled it a lot better so he said his piece he he owned up to it and i'm like you know mad respect to this man like he understood that what he ended it with it was not great he shouldn't have done that and he took he took the hit man he took it he took it on the chin you know he took it like a champ yeah so i'm like you know what at least there's that and then like the whole watching the documentary and him discussing about how he was being um trapped by uh his, the the dialogue coach like how he got isolated and basically just like became just he had to become dependent on this man because he, he was isolated from everyone else it's so fucked up dude oh and i'm That's just like holy stuff. shit this is a crazy documentary uh but yeah the whole dan schneider allegations i don't think again i don't think he was doing shit because he's a pedophile or anything like that i just think he's a power trip and asshole okay fuck, um, fuck that guy What's with that weird bird icon above Finn's head? I refuse. I outright refuse to use Twitter's new logo. It looks so bad. I outright refuse. Also, I'd have to have someone draw it anyway, and I don't want to spend money on that. <laughs> it's whatever. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows what uh, it's still Twitter. Also, also yeah. this overlay is going to be changed soon, so. What's um, with Nick and Creeps? Like, they had John K., the guy who made Rand and Stimpy. I don't know what happened. To, who, I don't know who that is. I mean, wasn't he just I haven't looked absolutely into this story. bad shit crazy? Like, wasn't that his deal? Um, got, anyway, we should dig. move on to the next question. Um, has a spinoff while watching that show. One of, yeah, the, one of the producers was Pen Pals with John Wayne Gacy. That was quite literally the... Um, Who's John Wayne Gacy? The, the serial clown. killer clown. The murder clown. Oh. Would trap, he would, like, freaking murder little boys in his basement. He'd make them, like, dig holes and throw them in them. And then chop them up and then kill them and then throw them in the hole. Um, I'm trying to remember. There was, I don't remember if it was Brian Peck that was pen pals to John Wayne Gacy or not. It might have been him. It might, it might have been a different guy. There was like, <laughs> unsurprisingly, Nick had has like three really big pedophiles in their entire like production. It's like shocking. Right. One was a convicted um sex offender, and he still somehow made it onto Nick's list. And it's like, well, they don't really vet very seriously. Welcome and to Hollywood, John. Uh, and then there was like another guy. He was known to groom two girls who were underage at the time of false promises at animation. What the fuck? Oh my god! That's, I didn't that's know the guy crazy. who made Ren. I mean, I could tell that the guy who made Ren and Stimpy was a fucked up individual because it's a fucked up show. So <laughs> yeah, that's something that's going not on. surprising. That is not surprising yeah. whatsoever. Um, but apparently he was also very difficult to work with, like with the other animators, like he was so inflexible and in, like the stuff he was doing. Um, what a weird Dan show Schneider that was. Is a, is Satan. Jerry Trainer was a saint. Yeah. Cause apparently Jerry Trainer uh, was like the guy who would get between Dan Schneider being an asshole. He would get in front of them and him, Dan Schneider and the actors, actors and stuff. Mm. Because, you know, again, Dan Schneider is be a giant asshole and kind of just does he, you know again king of the castle he's he has all this power and he thinks he's god he's untouchable that's it's really good trip thing yeah yeah i'm also opening another cold one with the boys uh -huh. cheers cheers buddy mm. ah. all right so uh, and, <laughs> yeah you you had your fill last bro night. root beer has zero percent alcohol yeah it's just wonderful. sobriety so good the sobriety he yeah, you go. Drink responsibly. Yes. Uh, remember when Nickelodeon made that contract with Fred, and the first thing they do is made him a guest star in an episode of iCarly and make him a creep who tries I remember to make that. out with Car Oh I my god! I remember this episode. It's so, I, I remember that. It's Carly. such a bad episode. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like they. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the episode, they have a bit where like all of them have the Fred voice, and it's so, so fucking. I bad. I do not remember this now. It was a weird time of YouTube history. Go back and watch it. It's Fred was great. Weird. <laughs> In the I worst way possible. I want to go back possible. and watch anything from from that show. <laughs> from then. <laughs> Thank God Steven Hillenburg doesn't have to live through any of this shit. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, moving on. Uh, next question comes from New Vegas Savior. What are your favorite cursed gun images? I have one that I go back to all the time. It's the AR-15 bottom and the Glock 19 top. That is cursed as fuck. I don't have a favorite. I don't know many cursed gun images. I don't know oh, also, Lucas the rear-firing bazooka is also pretty cursed. I don't know who Lucas is. I, from my car, Lucas bro. is the is like the 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 guy who plays um, Fred. Oh, oh, I did not know that was the his actual, actual name. Yeah, his actual name. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought his name was Fred. I thought his name was actually just Fred. <laughs> oh, damn! Um, I learned some gun today. images. There's a bunch of funny cursed gun images in my mind. Uh, the AK-50 comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> AK-47. AK yeah, look that up. <laughs> not the one that uh brendan herrera aka the ak guy is making that one's kind of cool but also kind of not cool but like people basically slapping the ak-50 uh style but with a fucking 50 bmg <laughs> and it's just are you like, looking I, it up right now i am it's it's something <laughs> i'm not sure how a gas blowback system would work inside of a fucking 50 cal like a bolt action 50 cal but how, here what, we are. what's the origin of this stupid meme the AK-50, uh, because, yeah. so, you know how the AK has, um, so many variations of the AK? Like, you want a You're sniper, right. but AK, the Dragunov. You, mm -hmm. <laughs> you want the, um, do you want the AK, but in 5.56, five, the Galil. Um, I learned something about the Galil, all right? The Israeli-made gun, it's Galil. A rifle. Apparently, it it's- a great rifle. It's named, not, it's not named after the guy who invented it. No. It's- because oh. the guy who invented its last name was quite literally, um, oh my god, what was it? Sablushnikov or something? It's like, because, yeah. you know, AK was, was made by Kalash, it was Kalashnikov who made the AK, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. the guy who made the Galil, which is the AK, but uh, in 5.56, five, so they could have those sweet, sweet NATO rounds, uh, <laughs> it was like Balashnikov or something. I swear, I swear, it's like Blashnikov. No wait, the Galil. Uh, let me check. Yeah, it was, it was Galil. Put that up, Jamie. It was Galil. The guy. No, it was. The... It's Blashnikov. Swear. I swear, it's Blashnikov. No, Israel Galil, best known for design the Galil assault rifle. He also helped to create the Uzi submachine gun. Oh shit! Is it a different gun? I'm gonna have to Maybe look it up. You're you might be thinking you something else. About a different gun. I swear it was the Galil. I, I, like, I, I also thought that Galil was named after something else, but I was like, wait a minute. So I looked it up real quick. I gotta look up Balashnikov. There's some I know the made... Uzi is named after the guy that invented it after he expressly stated he didn't want the gun named after him. There's also yeah, Uzi is like an actual the, name um... for a, of a person in Israel. Yeah, his, his, his actual name is Uziel. But uh, they just shortened it, was... it to Uzi. I'm trying to remember Uzi is like a very common the, nickname or name. The first like, rotary Gatling gun. Oh my god, who was it? Wasn't that John Moses Browning? No, no, Browning made the machine gun. Um there's a different one who made the uh you know the the Gatling gun that they use in Roroni Kenshin, where it's like it's hand crank, it's a hand crank one? Yeah. I know it's what you're like talking Maxim about. The hand something? the hand crank machine Maxim gun. Yeah, it's the Maxim gun. Yeah. yeah I hope you're gonna lie, so you don't deserve it now. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you're not a real American, John. I live in America. I don't need a gun license to own a gun. I just need to pass some background checks and the feds clear me, then we're good. <laughs> or free uh, Hi Hiram rifle. Stevens Maxim is the guy who invented the Maxim gun. Yeah, the hand crank Gatling gun. Maxim. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, the AK-50 in... to me is the most cursed gun. It's hilarious because it's like, I don't understand how 18, that would work. 1984, wow. A semi-automatic 15... 50 BMG with a gas blowback system. Like, how would you create that? Like, what? Because the, the biggest feature about the AK is the, the gas blowback system, right? On the top, where you have the dust cover protecting the little the gas blowback system. So that way it helps mm -hmm. self-eject itself to keep, make it automatic. So how do you make that but in 50 BMG? Like, you think about the powder that's being sent out to that fucking gun. Like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no fucking way. Some or Freerun holding like a sniper rifle. There you go. There's the cursed gun image. Freerun holding a sniper rifle. <sighs> All right. Should we move on to the next question? Sure. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, this question got, comes as well from Classy the Milf Hunter. Uh, wants to know what are your top three songs to listen to that aren't from anime? So, like, should I just look for the top three songs I listen to? Yeah, like I, mean, I can sure if you I want can to go pull that Spotify. up. If you just give me like two seconds to open up my iTunes, I could literally. But you said not anime songs. Check. Yeah, the not not. I'm assuming also like just not japanese but i guess they could be japanese as long as they're not in anime i could try and find hold on i got i'm going through my spotify list to find out like let's see can, do you know where to even look for spotify to find that stat though because that's an interesting stat i would what your like most know. listened to stuff yeah i don't think they have something dedicated for that's that a great question i mean i, I can tell you one of them off top of the bat because i listen to it all the time um, it's blue and green by Miles Davis. That's a great song. That's a mm -hmm. that's a great song. Um, I don't hmm. know how to sort my songs by most played on my iTunes here. Oh wait, maybe in my playlist. Like how we're all just going through our Spotify playlist, just looking at what <laughs> top twenty five most played anime song, anime song, anime song, anime. Song, Bro, anime that's song, my songs as well. Song, anime song, anime song. My World by Half Life is not an anime song. It's a J Rock song. Uh, anime song, anime song, anime song, anime song, anime song, anime song. Um, Scarlet Zero by Nano, not an anime song, though she does not sing an anime, anime songs, song, but it's not from an anime. Um, an anime song, it's very delightful. Song. Devil May Cry Five count. <laughs> it's not an anime, <laughs> anime song. It's not an anime yeah, it's song. Not anime. Um, and Scarlet Story also by Nano. I listen to a lot of J-Rock. <laughs> so outside of my anime songs, my top 25 are uh, J-Rock songs. Fair enough. Uh, probably my other two would be Surrender by Cheap Trick. That's a fucking phenomenal song. Um, and... Um... I've been listening a lot to Helplessness, Helplessness Blues by Fleet Fox. If uh, nice. you guys know. Really nice folk music great very cheap. i know my third my third one is going to be uh go your own way by fleetwood mac oh that's a that's a great record in general i love that yeah album. i that, that whole album is full of bangers but that top, song in particular top 10 album yes the whole jacob time. there is a dmc anime i i honestly like the dmc anime quite a lot it's <laughs> god you peaked your mic yeah, so bad there. right there Anyway, such a good song, dude. Although that all, that song I, you mentioned, of it. That, that song you mentioned, which I'm assuming appears in the game, doesn't appear in the anime, does it? No, no, it doesn't no, no, appear. No, no. In this the is anime. from DMC okay. Five. DMC Five then was I think like the, ten years I think after that, the anime. That counts based on the question. I suppose. Better Light is such a banger. It's like an eight-minute yeah. song. It's so fucking good. All right, well, so you know, I am the storm that is approaching. <laughs> Yes, he is. My we family crest he... is a demon of death. Uh, we hear it when he joins our uh, voice chat sometimes, how much he is the storm that is approaching. <laughs> also, recently... Flyway to the Moon is not... It was made before the Ava got its hands on it. Yeah, Flyway to the Moon doesn't count as an anime song. Yeah. Also, the Frank Sinatra version doesn't appear in the anime. It's a cover. Yeah. Which, the Frank Sinatra version itself is a cover. Is it? Uh, yes. The original song yeah, was cover. made to be sung by a woman, not a man. I did not know that. Mm. Also, it was written for to... a musical on Broadway uh, back in the 40s, It was I for believe. a musical originally? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Hmm. That's crazy. Wait, can I can I coattail this into my question next? I was going to say, since this is about this is about Since songs, we're talking about music... <laughs> Go ahead, because Drunk John last night added a question to this doc. Uh, so I wasn't drunk when I thought of this question, but I was drunk this morning, um, and I remembered I wanted to ask this question on the stream, but I just forgot to write it down. Mm -hmm. Jacob, bad it. joke. No one cares about that joke. <laughs> so since this is your question, go ahead and ask it. All right. So here's the deal. All right, Chuck, you can play with this game too. The last song that you listened to is now your stand, okay? Your stand name is going to be your artist name, and the ability, your stand ability is going to be the song name. What is your stand? I will start. 
Go ahead. The last song that I have li- I listened to this morning. I'm gonna check right here. Oh shit! I was gonna check as well. <laughs> what is it? BB Mac. My stand name oh. is BB Mac. Okay. Ghost of you and me is my stand power. <laughs> now I don't know how this is gonna how that ability works. Ghost of you and me, uh, mm-hmm. in the JoJo's universe. I, I'm gonna say that because of how the song it it talks about like past lives and sailing by ghost of you and me i can swap places with you by putting a ghost next to you i have a ghost i can attach and swap places and that's the ability that's all i can do i can okay. just teleport with ghosts can you give us a quick like 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 shout your stand <laughs> no <laughs> please no no please do it no oh that's a shame all right, so I've got the last song that I listened to up here. So the last song I listened to, which is about 15 or so minutes before we started uh, recording, was uh, Subdivisions by Rush. Oh, okay. No, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> that's a really good one. So my stand name would be Rush, which I actually looked this up also before we started recording. Rush is, and none of their songs have ever been used as a stand name in JoJo's yet. So I'm surprised to hear that. Um so and the stand name would obviously be subdivisions uh so my in like how i envision the stand's power being since it's named subdivisions is it makes several subdivisions of myself which i can then use to attack my enemy <laughs> so it's essentially oh my dividing God. myself into multiple clones <laughs> jacob that sounds is Miku harsh. by amon hanaguchi <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess your stand power is just Miku. You're feeling Miku, Miku, ooh, you're you. feeling Miku, Miku. <laughs> ooh, you. What powers does Miku have? What about the hair? You could use the hair to attack. Yeah, That's so the artist luck, name bro. is the name of your stand, and the song is the song name is the ability of your stand. That is that yeah. is the rules, Orc. And oh my god, motionless in white. Pretty sick stand. Okay. That's a good stand. Another okay. life? Okay. Do you just get infinite lives? Is that the stand power? How does it work? You Maybe it just revives die. you. It revives yeah, anything it touches. You get like the Mario sound effect, and it's like you come back to life. <laughs> yeah, the, the one-up <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, what about you? No, guys? Nintendo's going to sue you. you. I got a good one for you, actually. So the stand name would be Mute, it would be Muse. Okay. And the, the, the power would be Super Massive Black Hole. Ah, oh, that's super <laughs> strong. What the <laughs> hell? Dude. <laughs> Two OP, please nerf. Dude, Natalia has the strongest stand. This is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you really even have song. to explain what that stand does. No. I, I, the I name does exactly what it says. All right, now you have to call out your stand name and then your stand power. Muse! <laughs> okay. Super Massive Black Hole! Nani? <laughs> my no one has ever escaped. Ghost my... of you and me. Mine's not... Hey, I could kill you because Ghost of you and me. We swap. You're dead. You and killed I mean, yourself. Like, Fuck. <laughs> You're a countered bitch. You somehow, you somehow use your useless stand to end my life. <laughs> my stand name isn't fun to yell out because it's only a single syllable. It's just Russian. <laughs> what? That's, that's the pretty best. good. That's yeah, pretty that's good. good. Subdivisions. <laughs> <laughs> my stand is brother what brother dej deej brother dej and his ability his ability is too, too old, old to die, to die young. young that's a good that's a good name man there's a lot of songs that are about dying fuck we live in a society you know yeah uh what a dead meme <laughs> de- jacob the uh the song before mika was one single second by set it off so like a weaker version of the world, bro. Oh my god! City Dover, one single second. <laughs> <laughs> it works through only one oh. single second. Yeah, but in JoJo's, one single second is like ten minutes. Let's be honest. It just so works. you know what? <laughs> if the, if this actually happened to be a thing where I had to choose the song before the last one that I did, I would have had to have made a stand out of Idol by Yosobi. <laughs> I feel That's like that'd incredible. be a pretty good one, yeah. No, so th- bro, can you imagine I, I part cheated. nine? A new chapter no, I comes out. It's like Yo Asobi is like a character. In Yo, no yeah. way, no actual shot. So I could have cheated and set myself up for a cool one, but I was like, you know what? 
that's cheating. I want to use the last song that I listened to. So I didn't change my song because I thought it'd be funnier like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I still feel mine's pretty good. Right? I mean, I'm surprised that uh, Araki has not added like a Rush reference as a stand name yet. Maybe I'm he's shocked. just not into Rush too much. Although it's like well, it will be neither is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but <laughs> that's so fucking weird. That that's kind of like you know because the whatever. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame hates prog rock. Yeah, it's so stupid. It, it's it is stupid. Anyway, uh, should we move on to the next question, John? Yeah, but before we move on to the next question, you know. Comment down below what your stand name and standability is and explain to us how you could defeat Supermassive Black Hole by Natai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seriously, I mean, seriously, for anyone who is watching this after the fact, uh, do comment down below what the last song you listened to and, and who it was by and, like, tell us what the stand name and, and like, ability would be. It, it's a good little fun experiment it's just funny it's just, because it that's, i swear to god that's how iraqi chooses his stance he's it's the last song he listened to <laughs> i should do an episode where we come up with like stupid stands using like songs from our play playlist that's actually not a bad idea like a fun game night you know yeah it would be, it would be the fun fun thing to like maybe stream write it day. down just us, write it down just us just that would be a good thing for us to just drink and, and bullshit about for like an hour and a half two hours listen alex just wants to drink and do stuff on stream He's just hey, finding I, more excuses to get drunk on stream. I am. I am. Um, look so the closely next question, for his OnlyFans. What? What? No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, next question comes from John's wife, uh, Noodle, in our Discord server. Uh, oh, what are your favorite AMVs? Uh, uh, favorite comedy, drama, instrumental, etc. Um, uh, so my, mine was I, I talked about this years ago and I believe I was able to find a really low quality video AMV of it but it was a it's a map so it's a multi editor project where it has like I think there's four different animation people like four different people who edited the song but it introduced me to one of the uh, one of my other favorite J-Rock bands which was LA Garden and it's the song Salamander and basically it also introduced me to like two new anime that I've never seen at that point in my life so I watched it <laughs> But it, it it's just like really cool edit. Um, I can try to find it again. Oh wait, I can't. We can't even play it on stream. I can can't. We? I can't even play it because not only will the music get DMCA, the actual animation will get DMCA. Oh yeah. well. Um, it's it's an MEP and it, it has the song Sal Salamander by Ella Garden. So that's if you if you can find it, go ahead. But I found it on Nico Nico Doga. So I don't I don't know if Nico Nico Doga archives things that long ago from like 14 so years ago or something but good you know good luck alex is talking and i can't hear him yeah i know what the heck did he mute sorry himself? i had my mic had my mic muted while i was looking up old amvs um oh. no and I, <laughs> jacob said why didn't i drink with you guys last night i couldn't i was working last night <laughs> can't that new card game work. was it red dragon Bro, I was... was that what we were playing yeah that it was super I, fun. I've I seen it. you guys in that chat room for like hours. I would pop in to check it, like you were always there. I'm like, god oh, damn. Yeah, no, so what up to. last night I was waiting for Alex to respond to me to for like dimensions so I can start editing, doing some stuff. And while I was waiting for Alex to respond to me, I was just like, It's Friday night fisticuffs, Jacob. What game are we playing to versus each other? <laughs> and then it's like we only had a fighting game, and I was like, I don't really feel like playing Guilty Gear Strive. For Friday, so Friday Night Fisticuffs is something that I I wanted to start for the podcast, which is every Friday when we stream, we don't play co op games, we stream and we play versus games. You know, that's like a Mario great Kart, idea. Smash Brothers, whatever it is, right? We should just mm -hmm. play versus games and just get all the salt out every week. Weekly salt tournaments is what I'm trying to start. I think here. that's an awesome idea. Yeah. I think it is too. I wish I could do it every Friday, but I can't. I'm definitely not doing oh. it so I can just dunk on everyone about how bad you all are at fighting games compared to me. <laughs> Bro, bro, god damn it! I'll, when I upgrade to a new laptop, I'll let you know. We can try and do it as a regular thing. You know, there, there are. There's a fighting game you guys could download for free. It's on Steam. It's called it's Idol Hollow. Showdown. I can do that, and that's a sprite fighter. My favorite, absolutely best types of fighters, in my opinion, are sprite fighters. Like that's what I love about Guilty Gear. The sprite fighters, like Guilty Gear uh, XX. Shadows to Marvel vs. Two. Yo, yo, MVC Two was the yo. best, dude. It was so fun. 
Or play, yeah, oh my God. play I'll come Uno. there, not or play Uno. That. It's like the fifth person who suggested we play Uno on stream. <laughs> yeah, so uh, like so we okay. so because we couldn't find a game, I was like, wait, he should like, I can show you Red Dragon in. I was like, we could play tabletop simulator. Like we can just play a card game or something, you know? You know? So he was like, Oh, let's play Red I can download Red Dragon in and I can teach you how to play. And I was like, Okay, fine, whatever. And then What's I learned Red that Dragon? it's a uh basically it's you it's it's a drinking game like quite literally it's about okay. drinking so you have a character that you can play that has certain character skills character cards and there are action cards gamma cards basically you're trying to make everyone lose you have two two things right you have fortitude and you have drink and it's from 20 Ooh. to zero if those two ever meet so if your health is at 20 and you get knocked down to 10 and you had 10 drinks you lose Mm. So it's like two opposite pegs. So you're playing against each other. Once they meet or pass, you lose. Yeah. I see. And it was actually super fun. And we were just like, basically fun. every time our character in the game had to drink, because you have to drink every round, unless you have cards that can counter drinking that round or negating it, you had to drink in real life. <laughs> so that's what we were <laughs> doing for like five hours or four hours or something. And then we're they called me in there, and the game. sober person won two games in a row. <laughs> because the only person who was a threat to me was Jacob, because he knew how to play the game. I knew that well, if I was able to get Jacob... <laughs> let, let's be honest, that doctor he was playing was bullshit. That class was bullshit. I'm glad he lost that round. I'm so glad I was able to, like, take So there's take different him characters down. you can play in Red Dragon M, and there's, like, easy characters who are, like, super, you know, they're very straightforward how they play. Then there's complicated expert characters, so like there's a lot of setup involved, and you have to do a lot of rules and stuff. But they're they're pretty strong, but you gotta know how to play them. So you, if you want to be more strategical, mm. but I think it's fun to play as kind of just a drinking game. That doctor was not historically accurate. It was bullshit, and you know it. It's fucking OP <laughs> as hell. I think that there's some balance issues in the game, um, but I think it's a really fun game, and I I'm hoping to play it tonight, later on tonight with my friends in real life when we go out, if we choose to go to the the game place i'm not sure what we're doing after we eat do it do, do it. it uh so to go back to the uh, the question it was answered my favorite amv of all time is unsurprisingly a monogatari uh amv um it's one from about i think a decade ago now called into the labyrinth um it's, it's such fucking a good amazing. amv it's one it's of the best like AMV. most tightly animated amvs i've ever seen it's a great I can't movie. say that, that I've watched a lot of AMVs. Slaps. Um I know that at Same. like SakuraCon, the anime convention that is hosted here in Washington, the big one, hmm. uh they they usually have a block of like the best an the best AMVs of like the year or something. They'll they'll have like things you can submit entries to. Mm-hmm. Which are pretty cool, um, but I mean, I mean Otakon, which I go to every year now, has like a really robust AMV contest. So that's even after cool. all these years. Uh, also, Chinoda says he will be uh, joining us shortly. Um, I never got into AMVs, like, you know? Like, I watched maybe, like, four my entire life. I haven't watched no, I, that many. I, I get that. Um, I just accidentally found an AMV that just had... It just so happened to have a song that I was like, oh, this is a pretty sick song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, like, the reason I I say it's my favorite is because it introduced me to one of my favorite J-Rock bands. And uh, I'm sad that they're not together anymore. Fair enough. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. So the next question we have also comes from John's wife. Who's your favorite cat girl? Finn, obviously. Anakawa, easy. What? What? Anakawa, Sorry. fuck you, you traitor, fucking I'm traitor. A traitor. This who man do I, does not do fight I, for democracy. Who do, I, who do I betray? Our mascot or my wife? <laughs> you see, it's tough. Oh, Caillou. <laughs> <laughs> High school of the dead AMV's peak. <laughs> High school of the dead was just peak. We just didn't realize it at the time. <clears throat> um Cheetah. I, I, I had Cheetah something is I was gonna the, the actual cat or the is it the character? Or where? I mean, if, if cheetahs are really cool animals, not gonna They're lie. They're sick. Have you seen how uh, fast they are? Yes, I have. It's insane. Um, if you're asking me favorite cat girl in anime, though, I mean, I've got to go with Hanakawa, yeah. <laughs> My answer doesn't uh, change. It's, it's, it's Okayu. Oh, it's I thought you said Okayu. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Well, that was an easy question to answer. Uh, yeah. Next question comes from Classy the Mill Hunter. If you went back in the past, between a hundred to a thousand years ago, what three items would you want to bring with you? To the past? To the past. If anywhere between a hundred to a thousand years ago. Do I get to live back to the modern day? Like, what's the point of going to the past? Like, like do are I have the to consequences survive? to bringing? Like, if I bring a smartphone, will that break like the timeline? Because like that'll. Well, your smartphone wouldn't their... work because there's no electricity. There wouldn't be a way. To no, charge if you it, bring a full like, battery, no... a full char fully charged phone with a battery to go, that's like you can get stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but you don't have, have cell a... phone towers, bro. You don't have internet. You couldn't no, call anybody on it, but you could still use the no, apps. No, 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 you don't understand. Just the technology of a, of a, of a touch screen like fuel phone shit. You know, like I'll have some videos on it downloaded and like some games I can I can download as well just to. It's high. If anyone sees years you ago. with that a thousand years ago, they're going to execute you for witchcraft. That's what I'm saying, bro. You could like break up the timeline. Like, will it have consequences? Uh, um, nope. Once you pick the year, you are stuck there forever. He says. I see. see, that's gonna be hard because like the three things that I'm trying to bring are things that will make it so I can become king of the castle, and I will be <laughs> I will be the ruling monarch for the next thousand years now because I've brought this these three things with me that make me seem like a god to everyone. Classy. Classy I shall become the that. god emperor that humanity deserves. <laughs> he claims that you stay in the, you're stuck there forever. So yeah. yeah. So if I traveled back a thousand yeah. years ago, right? That's so we're talking literally thousands, um, AD, thousand twenty four or something. How could what should I bring or what could I bring to make me king of the castle for the next thousand years? Things that would make people bend to my because you can bring a gun, sure, and I can definitely do the maintenance on it. Um. Because you just really you don't need that much stuff to clean the. I'm not going to use it that much, but I you can only bring things and you need ammo. So you couldn't well, really. Well, the, fir the first thing you should do if you're going back to the year 1024, uh, you need to go find and kill William the Conqueror because that's going to fuck up the timeline to your into your in your favor. Yeah, Probably see, it's like if Hitler. I had three things, that's, right? That'll be interesting. <laughs> Well, if I could th bring three modern things to a thousand years ago and just basically conquer everything, could I just bring a tank like an Abrams? <laughs> <coughs> like if I could bring like an Abrams with me and just as one item, I feel like that'd be enough to destroy a lot of people. I mean, if you brought an AR-15, like a modern AR-15 and like, say, a couple thousand rounds of ammunition, you'd be emperor within a week. I, I mm, see. The thing is. I think a lot of people are forgetting that archers exist and they are fucking dead accurate, right? We're talking about longbow. An arrow can't beat a bullet when it's fired from a gun, man. No, but they can hit you from a lot further and there are a lot more of them than there are you. Like, so I don't you think you understand. Rifle, You're not impervious gonna... to longbows, bro. Those things will smack through your armor. Need to bring modern Kevlar armor back in time with you, too. I like how That's we have so three different I don't think you understand the guy's that... name are a bunch of guns. <laughs> Goddamn American. Listen, I don't think you understand that Kevlar may stop a bullet. It does not stop the impact. You're still going to break ribs and you're going to. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know how Kevlar bullet or Kevlar vests work. I know that they don't completely stop the bullet. And I know you still get bruises and it can still go through, especially if you're shot like at point blank range. It can still go through the vest. Yeah, um, but I'm saying a Kevlar, how it works how it stops bullets is that because it's fast, right? It can slow it's, it's fibers upon fibers. That's not going to stop an arrow, bro. It's a not going to hurt. So a war bow is a very long giant bow and the draw strength on them are, is insanely high and you can shoot them for y hundreds of yards. Okay. Hmm. Your effective range with a rifle is going to be about 150 to 200 yards at max. If you have the right scope and can you even hit that far? Yeah. So I'm just saying I would like, rather given the you given the choice versus between 200 people with these war bows you're not living that you're not living through that bro they will besiege you I'm they saying though, John they John, they have catapults every, bro they have trebuchets despite everything you're saying <laughs> given the choice if I have a choice between taking an arrow to the chest bare chested wearing absolutely nothing versus wearing a kevlar vest I'm going to wear the kevlar vest listen a trebuchet hauling 90 i'm not talking weight. about a trebuchet i'm talking about a fucking arrow the trebuchet will fuck up your vest bro <laughs> yeah but my you point is your, your gun may be able to take over uh one castle immediately you're not standing up to the entire nation 
if they besiege you at any point, you're fucked. You can do small. You, you can do small term skirmishes. How about a nuke? I'll bring a nuke back in time. They wouldn't understand why a nuke is scary. They don't know what radiation. Oh, is. they'll oh. they'll find out real quick why a nuke is scary. <laughs> you know what? You know what'll fuck him up a thousand years ago? Hmm. If you bring like a fucking fully sized fucking ducky makra with a Japanese like. <laughs> That'll do the job. You'd be like, what? <laughs> You've trapped someone inside of this cloth. He's a witch. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't remember. There's a uh, there's an old TV show. I want to say it's from like the late 90s or early 2000s where Doctor Who. No, the, but the, prim the premise is like something that would be in Doctor Who where I, I want to say it was like uh George Washington or Ben Franklin, one of the founding fathers, is pulled forward in time, and they're like the way they react to uh, like modern technology is really funny. It's like come across coming across a TV and they're just a flat screen TV and they're just like looking behind it, like hmm, hmm, <laughs> like they can't <laughs> fathom the idea of like a picture in a screen. Trebuchet are very terrible at attacking individuals. Yeah, but a trebuchet can hit you from like 350 yards away, bro. You ain't hitting that trebuchet. They set up three wherever you're at, they're gonna fuck up your castle. You ain't living. Just bring a toilet and a shower to the past. There you go. Point is, show them bring... modern plumbing. I feel like it's hard to bring even five items. Like, there's nothing I could bring that could make it so I could take over the world. It'd be well, you very hard go to do too that far. as one person. You wouldn't want to go too far into the past, especially if you plan to speak English. Oh, that's true. A thousand years should be fine, though. All mm -hmm. right, I'll travel back, like, to the, um, to 1776, <laughs> as the Founding oh, Fathers go. intended. <laughs> yes, the Founding Fathers <laughs> intended, exactly. I'll go save Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I mean, if you bro, really bro, we'll wanted to... For just a bit. <laughs> if you really wanted to, like change the timeline a lot what i would do i wouldn't even bring weapons in the past first of all i'd bring vaccines to like not die from all the stuff i haven't been exposed to um but also i would just bring like textbooks back into the past that just explain modern concepts and just jumpstart technology they would not believe you yeah hey that's all they got to do is read it and try it for themselves literally man. was it in the 1800s or the 1890s or whatever there was that doctor who was like hey a lot of babies are dying maybe we should wash our hands because we're doctors and we you know we're touching oh, germ people's... theory yeah like germ theory was this one doctor and they, they all called him a quack they're like we're doctors we, we don't have anything dirty on us like, what the fuck what, what do you mean and as it turns out uh he was right but he died in poverty and he thought he was ridiculed. Stupid. Yeah, ridiculed. They they basically yeah. was like, "You're a fucking idiot," and he was right. So yeah. even if you had the technology, the the knowledge to jumpstart this technology, convincing people that you're right would be a lot harder. True. For the technology, though, a lot of it you just have to build it and show them, "Hey, this works." You know what? Fuck it. I'm I'm thinking way too hard. I need, I only need one thing to bring with me to the past. Okay, I'm gonna go to the 1970s. Okay, and I'm gonna bring a world <laughs> almanac. Like five five different world almanacs. Are I'm you gonna be like fucking... Biff and you're yeah? Gonna I'm gonna be like, be like Biff. And Back to the Future. <laughs> I'm I'm doing a Back to the Future deal now. I'm just gonna be Biff and I'm gonna bring that world almanac to the past and I'm just gonna live life like that with my world almanac. That's it. Like, I'm thinking way too you're hard. Right. I don't need to be you're king doing... of the castle, bro. You got you gotta be very accurate about your doing your Back to the Future because that that could be a bit uh, dangerous if you know what I mean. Doing a Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor mom. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, God, don't fuck your mom. Don't fuck your mom. If I went back to the seventies, my mom would be like five years old, and she'd be in Thailand, so I'd be okay. Oh, okay, good to know. But your Calvin grandma, Klein. Bro, Calvin, Klein. my grandma would be in Laos. <laughs> like what? I'd be Back to the Future in America in the seventies. You know how easy it was to just assume an identity in the seventies. I could literally just walk into any local. I mean, you still can walk into any local, like, uh, town hall and just get a fucking social security card of someone. Calvin Klein, records. is that your name? It's all over your underwear. <laughs> exactly. I am Calvin Klein, yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, so in the fact, last quest you could just oh, literally just request one back in the day. It's not, do you understand how easy it was to just, like, be someone else in the 70s? 
Yeah, uh, there was te- yeah, there was no internet as we currently know it in the seventies, but ARPANET was a thing back then. It was very rudimentary, but it existed. Yeah, but my point was in the seventies, it was so easy to move some like to a town fifty miles away, and no one would know who the fuck you were, and just be a different yeah. person. Yep. I mean, if you want to make it even easier for yourself, just go back to the fifties. Although you, John, might not want to go back to the yeah, 50s. Yeah, I don't think I want to go to the 50s. I'll stay in the <laughs> 70s, thank you very I much. I mean, I'd be fine in the 50s. I mean, you, not you, so you, much. You just, settle, just settle for the 60s, dude. It's not that bad. Actually, even in the 50s, I might be a little uh, sus. It's like, fucking Irish people, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they recognize you as Americans real people. Americans didn't like Irish back in the 50s? Uh, they didn't like the Irish really. back in World War One. They because I so because of the potato famine, a lot of Irish people came to America, mm-hmm. and you know how America feels about um, immigrants. <laughs> they don't like them very much. Yikes! <laughs> there were signs really up a lot after the like mass immigration of Irish people to the United States, uh, especially in the big cities. If they were hiring people, it would say now hiring, and underneath there'd be a little caveat that says no Irish need apply. So that was World War One, though. I think in the 1960s, well, people hated the uh, – because of the, the mob and stuff, people were hating on the Italians. The Italians, yeah. Yeah. Italians? I like saying Italians. It's fun. Okay. I know I'm... it's Italians. I like saying Italians. <laughs> Somewhere Giorno is like, Psh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's the taste of a liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the last question. Uh, so the last question we have for this month's WTF. And by the way, um, we didn't answer. We're not going to answer all the questions that were in our uh, Discord channel for uh, WTF questions. So if you don't hear your question answered here uh, today, uh, it will be answered during next month's WTF. Um, so this uh, question comes from New Vegas Savior. Uh, ask, what do you prefer for cross-country travel, train or plane? That depends. So I have done both for traveling. I like planes because they're so much faster than trains. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going around to enjoy scenic views, then obviously the train, you know. And if you have extra time for travel. Yeah, like if I'm just like taking a tour to the different states, like I took a train down to Portland and I was like, this is actually a pretty sweet like ride. Like I don't have to drive to Portland. It takes like maybe an extra hour and a half, I think, to get to where I needed to go. But I could just ride on a train. I didn't have to do nothing. I literally did nothing. I sat. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, and I didn't mind because I was like, you know, uh, I was going to surprise my wife because she was down there for a convention. So I went down there to surprise her, and she had a car. So I was gonna. Not the first gonna... person you've surprised at conventions. <laughs> yes, in typical me fashion, I I do what I want. Hmm. Um, so that's why I took the train instead of flying because I was like, you know what, I'll just take the train. I've never experienced taking the train uh, outside of, like, just locally taking a train. I wanted to mm-hmm. see what it's like going across states. And it was pretty cool. I liked it. Yeah. In terms of cross-country travel, like, if I need to get to places, like, further away, because I think there's a limit to my comfort with trains because it's kind of shitty to be stuck in a train constantly, like, for days on end, you know? I don't want to be yeah. on a train for, like, 48 hours. five days <laughs> yeah because that's uh, that's a long time to be on a train 48 hours okay it's two days straight it's uh, like being confined in a car for several days across country well it's like if i were to take trains all around the u.s it would take me so long i'd rather just fly and if it's like also, if i don't if it's not a problem of price i would just fly everywhere because it's like I, if i want to go to specific places like oh i want to go to disneyland oh i want to go to disney world oh, i want to go to the grand canyon whatever i would rather fly I if did that notice case. that the train prices in the States can be quite steep depending on like the train, like, like some, like some places, obviously, but sometimes it's not necessarily the cheapest alternative, you know, to be fair, what when you tell. came to the States and, and looked up those train prices, uh, nor- traveling by train in the Northeast, which is where you were, is the most expensive place to travel by train in the United States. Oh, really? That yeah, specifically so, is like the most expensive area. For example, for me to take a flight over from uh, Washington to Portland, where I needed to go, right? I think the plane mm-hmm. was going to cost me like two fifty or three hundred dollars U.S. round trip. Ugh. Round trip, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I were to take the train, it only cost me like fifty bucks. Wow, that's nothing. Yeah, yeah. and it's like it's a 
two, three hour, two, that's about a two, two and a half, two, yeah, about a two hour flight, hour and a half, two hour flight versus a five hour train ride. So it's like, okay, well, it's double the time to get there. But, but so much cheaper. But that's 50 bucks. That's nothing. But it's like 20% of the price. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a big difference. So it's like, you know, I, for 200 extra dollars, I would rather wait two hours. That's the, to me, that's worth it. Cause I was like, again, it's not like I had anything. I was editing our podcast actually while I was on the train. That's crazy. Nice. <laughs> I was working. What do you think about it? Cause what I think about just the time of like standing the, my, the reason well why my, like... the, the reason my price was more expensive. Cause there were cheaper train tickets, by the way, I bought the, uh, premium package thing, whatever. So I could have a booth to myself with a table. So I could work. That's nice. And I was in this booth. This is like a four person booth by myself. Nice. Because people are like, why would I pay the extra like 30 bucks when I can just pay 20 bucks to ride the the train down here? So that's my like I, I paid more for a reason. You're train because ever since I watched trains. snakes on a plane, I don't like planes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny. So I remember I watched snakes on a plane in theaters, right? And Samuel mm. L. Jackson curses in the film, and it's like, I'm tired of these mother, motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane, okay? And then one time I saw the movie on FX, one of the uh, broadcast channels here in America. It was replaying Snakes on a Plane, but obviously they can't curse on TV. So they changed, they had Samuel L. Jackson redub the line, and instead of saying motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane, he says, I'm tired of these monkey flipping snakes yes. on this Monday to Friday plane. And I'm like, what? Monday to Friday. <laughs> yeah. Monkey flipping snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. And I'm like, who wrote this? <laughs> it's so awkward to say. Oh my god, why would you even change that? I mean, I know why you gotta change the line, but god, there's gotta be something better you can put in there. Hell, it would have been better if you just said monkey flipping twice in a row. Honestly, honestly. Samuel L. Jackson is my favorite interview of all time. Like that, have you seen that one he did for say Django and Change? Say it, say it, just say it. Say it. Just gonna say it, you say it, say it. It's just a word. Come on, say it. It's just Nothing. a word. Say it. Nothing. Nobody. What a word. Just say it. <laughs> Just say it. Just you say it. It's not the same when I say it. <laughs> <laughs> we oh need sleeping God. beds and trains. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of want to experience. I kind of want to experience yeah, sleeping on a train. Cars. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I I don't like sleeping on moving stuff in general, like cars, planes. <coughs> like I just don't like sleeping outside of a bed. Hmm. And while moving. Um, <laughs> About the train thing, right? So I, I do fly like two or three times a year when I go on like vacation and stuff. Um, and so I've kind of gotten used to flying around the country. Um, a lot, like John said, it's because it's faster. Um, and sometimes, especially if you're on the East Coast, if you're just flying East Coast to East Coast, it is going to be roughly the same price, if not a little bit cheaper. Um, but I did ride a train once in my life. A long distance train. I drove or I rode in a train from here in Central Florida, where I live, to uh, upstate New York on an Amtrak train when I was like seven years old. I enjoyed the experience as a kid, but I don't think I'd want to do it again. <laughs> How long? Yeah, I was remember. It? Um, it was like a almost two day long trip. So outside of traveling, because I've only done the state to state train once, uh, we used to have another train called the Spirit of Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, that I went on, like, I think twice or three Period times. Period of was... Seattle. The yeah, flying made... pussyfoot. <laughs> the flying pussyfoot, yeah. So the uh, the Spirit of Seattle was like, it was like a yellow, I think it was, colored train that took you on, like, a tour through Washington. Like, you'd go from, like, Tacoma to Everett or something. I don't actually remember where we went, but, like, or Tacoma to Seattle, someplace. It's just a small, like, little thing that you could just go on the train tracks around Washington, like, up and down the coast. It was cool. Mm. And I did it a couple times when I was a little kid, and I liked it. I do wish here in the U.S. we had, like, better rail transit systems. I wish we had better we... infrastructure as well, yes. I wish we did Yeah, I mean, everywhere. better infrastructure in general, <laughs> yes. But I do wish more, like, rail mass transit would, like, I, I really wish we had a better mass transit system in the United States. Both local and, like, nationwide. 
because like a lot of the times the the train tra the train journeys you go on in the united states especially if they're like multi-state train journeys a lot of the rail that those uh trains go on and i think all passenger trains in the united states are run by amtrak um um they have to go because they don't most of the lines don't have dedicated rails just to passenger trains so you have to go on the same rail lines that freight trains are on and in the united states at least freight trains always have priority on rail lines always yeah they've got millions of dollars of commerce to move dude like <laughs> yeah so i feel like if there were actually more dedicated just passenger rail lines it would be a lot better than it is but of course that takes a lot of money and political will and stuff that no one wants to put forward to do that shit listen whenever um <laughs> I was going to make a joke about the Hyperloop, but the Hyperloop sucks. Like, Elon's not going to save us from that. I mean, it's just a glorified subway, basically. Yeah. Let's take the cars, put them underground in a tunnel. You mean like a subway, I believe Elon? It when I see it. Like a subway with cars? <laughs> like a subway, but with cars. I mean, we've we've been building tunnels through mountains for years. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> just under cities. Uh, we got cars and states. Yeah, I mean, that's a big part of the reason why we don't invest. I, I won't say it's the only reason, but it's a big part of the reason why we don't invest more in mass transit in the United States is because we have this car culture. Listen, Which is I, crazy because I still can't believe that in Florida, you're literally fucked without a car. I couldn't oh, believe Florida, it. Florida, you, if you don't have a car in Florida, you are going to be poor your entire life. That's insane. Yeah. I... We have the light rail here in Washington, so we do have a, a um, railway system for mainly mm -hmm. just for Seattle. And every time I've used it, I love it because it only costs me like three dollars, like three seventy five. I think it was last time I went four dollars for an all day pass mm -hmm. to ride from nice. southern Washington uh, down in near Tequila SeaTac near the airport. Like I'd go park mm -hmm. there, then I just go into Seattle. Like parking in Seattle, first and foremost, is fucking expensive. Like we're talking. $20 for an entire day of parking. Ooh. Basically. It's like $10 per hour and then $5 for the second and then $5 for the fourth. And basically it's like $30 total if you just pay for more than four hours. It's like the general idea. And then especially if there's events and stuff like baseball games, um, comic con, um, soccer con, you know, conventions, whatever, they jack up the prices of rent of parking your car to like That's 35, so 40 bucks. It's coming. Yeah, at peak, it's like sometimes I remember I saw a garage that was like seventy five dollars for parking or something during um one of the years, and I was like, "Fuck that!" So it's it's, it's worth like, noting that's pretty much the same across all big cities in the United States. Parking is just absolutely insanely yeah. So it's like expensive. I didn't want to deal with the traffic. I I didn't want to deal with having to fucking find parking because if you even if you get to the area you want to get to, those parking garages get filled up so fast, and you got to keep going. You get further out from where you still have to walk, like maybe half a mile to get to where you need to go. I'm like, why don't I just go park at the train station or at the light rail station and just take the fucking light rail? It's $4. Yeah. And I don't have to drive. I just sit there. 45 minutes later, I'm in where I need to be. Sweet. It's going to take me that long to drive there anyway. And then I don't have to fight with fucking traffic and like all this other crap. Is traffic like really yeah. bad in Seattle? Yes. God, I hate yeah. downtown traffic so much. There's so much... Because there's always construction going on because all the bridges are fucking old and falling apart. So they're always fixing a bridge somewhere. So there's going to be a backup. <laughs> and uh, the the main freeway that runs through Seattle connects with, like, other freeways and other, like, expressways that you can get onto to go north or south. So it's just bad. Like, we're, we're talking five-lane highways here that connect yeah, into, like, it's not great. different ways. So many other different freeways. There's... So it's I-5, goes through Seattle, connects to I-90, connects to 520, um, connects to 405, um, and then there's a bunch of other highways that connect to it, I believe, as well. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, freeways that connect to it and also a bunch of different highways that connect to it. That So it's kind of everything just filters into I-5, and Seattle is just so congested because there's so many people there. It's just bad. So we're stating 90% of rail lines are built and uh, owned by commercial businesses. That's why they, yeah. So much of rail in the United States is owned by commercial entities like CSX and um, yeah. what's the one that's out West? Is it Evergreen or something like that? Um, I think so. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know that much about trains, but there's like there's uh, like f- like four or five really major like rail shipping companies in the United States, and they all to, own like ninety percent of all the rail lines. To put it into perspective, Natai, from where I live to go into downtown Seattle without traffic, maybe twenty minutes. With traffic, mm. we're looking at an hour, twenty minutes. Uh, that's yes. so rough. Yes. It's like how it is where where I live because where I live right now is like roughly halfway in between Tampa and Orlando, right? Mm-hmm. Um, on a good day with little to no traffic, I can get into Orlando within about thirty minutes from here, roughly thirty minutes. If there's really bad traffic, especially if there's something big going on at like Disney or if there's some big event happening in Orlando, it's hour fifteen, hour twenty, hour thirty. How come- how come when I go in, I was going with you to Orlando? Like it seemed pretty like okay. We weren't like I also lived in Orlando when you stayed with me, so we were already there. That also helps. Yeah, that's also <laughs> yeah. helps. Yeah, right. when you live in the city that has a lot of traffic, you don't have to experience it because you're already here. That's right. That was before yeah. you moved. Yeah, good, good job. And also, right? like my when we were mo- especially when we were on the um, the highway I four. Um, when we went to Disney, it was like not a peak time. It was like, it was after rush hour in the mornings. Um, I see. So it was like, I think we went at like what? Nine 30 in the morning. So that's yeah. after rush hour. And yeah. then when we went to my mom and dad's house for, uh, for that dinner, that one time, um, it that was, was like early wanted... dinner. If I'm honest, that was, like... it was, it was an early dinner. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon, but it was also on a Saturday. I see. Yeah. It's a funny uh, time to have a dinner. At four o'clock. My mom and dad like to eat early. They're old. Ah, I, I respect that. Uh, all right. Well, shall we move on to actually talking Seeing about your the parents roast talking. you helps with me gaining. Like, you got you got to see it live and in person, Natai. You got to see yeah, it just it absolutely great. right in front of your face. I think the thing I, that you said you were surprised front about. Front the thing that you were said you were surprised about is how my dad and his brother just absolutely shit on each other constantly. It's great. It's such such good entertainment. I love it. You know, it. I find it intriguing that your parents constantly shit on you. That's kind of like like how we constantly shit on you, Alex. You're just the punching bag. You're the butt end of all of our jokes. Why do you think I don't take it personally? Have you gotten used I, to it over the years? No, I think it's funny years of that... suffering. No, I I think it's funny that that's how your parents treat you. But the minute that they're back in town, they're like, "Hey, do you want to grab dinner?" And you're like, "Yes, Dada, yes, Papa, <laughs> let us have dinner." He's, you know, there's a word for it. I had I mean, plans in place, but let me move them for you, Papa. And I'm just like, <laughs> this man is whipped. <laughs> like he just bro, being Alex is emotionally a abused, yes, coming back it. for more, bro. Like, come on. I mean, I have I have it. been to hell, Mom. Oh. Did he disconnect? Oh, he's oh, no. Malevolent. Oh, oh, okay. Good. Oh, oh, his I internet's thought, cutting I out. It was fine, fucking shit. Fine. It was cutting out. Oh, your internet was it's cutting fine, out, bro. It's fine. You have it's been fine. to where? Hell, Michigan? No, no, yeah, Michigan is hell. No, I said it's, I've been to Hell Meyer and Malevolent Creek. I, I, I've seen some shit, man. <laughs> Dude, Hell Meyer. I have was no so idea garbage. what those words mean. Uh, there's Hell Divers. You too. should. Dude, you should really play Hell Divers too. It's, it's really good. I should first get a laptop that can play games. Yes, you, know, you should. You should, should definitely talk. do that. Um, but yeah, let's actually get into uh, the things we want to talk about. Thank you all who asked questions on our Discord server, by the way. Like I said, if you didn't hear yours answered here, it will be answered on next month's uh, WTF at the end of April. Um, Great so question. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Um, and I want to start out with something, and then I'm going to like hand it over to Natai, because I know for him it's super late. Um so the one thing I do want to talk about before I hand it over to you, Natai, is uh, it's kind of old news now, but uh, earlier this month, we lost one of the OGs, one of the greats, uh, Akira Toriyama. Uh, R.I.P., my dude. Dude, R.I.P., Akira Toriyama. That's, he died pretty young, too. Yeah, in the la- you realize in the last yeah. three years, we've lost Mura, who created Berserk. We lost, uh, I, I, I constantly forget his name, but dude who created Yu-Gi-Oh!, um god what was his i always forget his name i'll look it up um and now we've lost akira toriyama in the span of three years yeah that's, that's crazy kind of yeah, yeah i, I mean, um that time didn't we, didn't we just lose someone else though? kazuki um, takahashi takahashi yes yeah wasn't there someone else before um 
Akira Toriyama, someone in the industry. Uh, I mean, there's another probably. been a few, but I don't know if there's anyone like super well known. This past year? Yeah, I swear there was someone else right before Akira Toriyama. A manga famous cup. person. Like a couple was months it a ago. Manga I don't remember. There's there's so many people dying young. Um, I know, it's right? Sad. It's almost very like sad. this profession is killing its creators. Yeah. So, um, I remember playing. Have you guys ever played any of Akira Toriyama's video games? Because he made no. video games. He made video games. I did not know that. Yes. Oh wait, uh, you're talking about Chrono Trigger. It wasn't just Chrono Trigger. I he also he made Dragon it. Quest. That's right, Dragon Quest. I keep forgetting yeah. it was part of like, it. One of the most classic JRPGs of all time is yeah. Dragon Quest. Like, I don't. I, I, it's a huge understatement. Like for the Western world to understand how much Japan loved Akira Toriyama. Like they always talk about not just Japan. Like so, you're like you know the slimes in RPGs. That's a Dragon Quest. Thing. That's a cure. Yeah, that's, that's a, a Toriyama, <laughs> which is insane. Yeah, Same. and. And he was the uh, creator of my one of my all time favorite JRPGs, which is it's Chrono Trigger. I love Chrono Trigger, the music, the art, the animation. The games are super fun. And, oh, that's like, also I, right. Orc, Orc brings it up in the chat. Uh, Monkey Punch a few years ago also uh, died. Uh, the creator of Lupin the Third. Mm. Oh, that's who it was. Okay. I swear there this was is back in twenty nineteen. Five years but, ago. Yeah, twenty nineteen. No, no, there was still. someone else in the industry. It might have been a voice actor. I think. Maybe if if anyone knows who John is thinking of, let us know down below. Someone else died. Listen, there's been so many deaths, so many people that. Oh, oh, oh I think I know who you're thinking of. It was a, a a very long time voice actor, been around in the industry for like decades. Um, uh, fuck. What are you talking about? You're talking about. I don't guy remember who the Joseph? voice actor's name. I I don't remember the voice actor's name, but it was like two months ago. Yes, months ago. that person. I don't remember the voice actor's name, but I think that's who John is thinking of. And they were like, like super prolific back in like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But yeah, uh, you know, R.P. Kriya Toriyama. I know that the Western world knows him mostly for Dragon Ball, which is, you know, again, I love Dragon Ball. The original Dragon Ball is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't talk about GT. Other than the ending. <laughs> no, I, liked the, I, I liked the ending to GT because it made me sad. <laughs> The ending of the GT, GT was, was uh, an experience. So GT real. was definitely an experience, but I did like the it ending. Was because, something. Well, it, it just made me so sad because, like, oh, bro, Goku, you left Chi Chi like that, man. Chi Chi bad, bro. Like, oh my god, she a baddie. How, How do you, you do that Chi -Chi to her? Like that. Seriously. And that's why Vegeta and Piccolo are the better dads because, like, they didn't leave. You know, Vegeta didn't leave uh, Bulma alone. They didn't leave for milk. <laughs> it's uh, kind of insane how. Super Saiyan 4 is pretty cool, yeah, with the whole, like, the red and black theme. It's pretty sick. Some of the aesthetic in GT was, like, pretty sick. Yeah, the story itself was really stupid. Um, it was bad, yeah. but, like, some of the visual stuff they had was pretty cool. Like I said, I did some like the villain. ending. It's crazy how Dragon Ball changed everything, like, both in the manga and anime, like, industry. Because, like, it, it became so massive. You know, I feel like in the Literally, 90s I don't in think... particular, like when Dragon yeah. Ball Z was airing, like I think that was responsible in the West for getting a lot of young people into anime. Bro, I literally won't be here today if I wouldn't have watched Dragon Ball. I can tell you for a fact. Like it's kind of crazy to think about, but mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, that's like a show that that's how they got introduced to this. Like, oh, this is so cool! How they're fucking punching the shit out of each other! And the... Oh my god! Yeah, just like yeah. This, I mean, I don't, almost out of worldly type of like cartoons in big egg quotes. They would get right, like, yeah, like get... the the super like it's such a classic shonen that spawned so many freaking other shonen and inspired yeah. so many yeah. other shonen and other manga. It inspired a lot of mangaka. Um, yeah, like like fucking. I remember reading the uh, the. I'll look it up because it has a really nice quote. The uh, sort of like eulogy that uh, HRO that the guy who created One Piece had. Um, it's just crazy, like, to think that without Toriyama, One Piece wouldn't have existed, probably, you know, because it's such a massive influence on like this, like, like generation of creators. I think, I think it's safe to say there's making a... Toriko, the, um, the eating anime, I think. Really? That was, think... was that him? I don't think it was. 
I, I gotta look it up. It reminds me a lot of Toriyama. It really reminds me of Toriyama, but I don't think it is. To what Natai was saying, though, I feel like oh, there's a lot of, like, shonen that came after Dragon Ball that may not have happened without the influence and inspiration of Akira Toriyama. Like, I feel like you could say the same thing about Naruto, maybe Bleach, um, even, like, modern shonens like MHA and JJK. I, I still feel it's like there's crazy. a lot of influence by this man in the industry. It's it's insane how far like almost everywhere in the world like you can talk talk about Dragon Ball Z. And it's like oh yeah, like I know that. Like it's yeah. so far reaching. Like, it like got I've almost I've everywhere. never really gotten super into Dragon Ball, but it's so prolific within the anime space. Like I know about it. Like I know things about it without ever having really engaged that deeply with it. Which oh, I think says a, a lot guy. about uh, what it's not done Toriko. by Toriyama. No, Toriko was made by someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured as much. But anyway, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to bring that up, even though at this point it is kind of an old news story, but we haven't had a chance really at all to talk about it on the podcast. So, R.I.P. Man, did you guys uh, get into uh, like Toriyama? Was it John for you through the games first, and then like his? Like Dragon Ball and stuff, or was it that way around? Uh, for me, it was Dragon Ball. Like the first thing I ever watched was Dragon Ball, like the original yeah, me Dragon too. Ball. And the fucking <laughs> it was a little perverted, you know, back in the day. Where it's like a little. Well, because Goku's Just a like little. Goku's a kid in the original Dragon Ball, right? We follow Goku and we meet him as a kid, right? And he's not an adult yet, and he <laughs> he doesn't know. Like he gets raised in the mountains, he doesn't know what a girl is. So he thinks like he, he pants. I remember there's that scene where he like he pats Bulma where the the dick is supposed to be or the balls, and he's like she has no balls. Like what the heck's going on here? Like while she's sleeping, because he's no he's an innocent kid. It's just an innocent joke and a funny play on like haha. Look, he's an innocent kid. He doesn't know anything about balls, and it's just like you know that's that's super problematic nowadays. But it's, it's like you know that's a stupid joke. It's such a stupid joke, but that's also like that's the curiosity of kids. Right. Yeah. It, to me, there it was a harmless joke. It's not freaking sexual assault. Like people are yeah. nuts. Like that he's just a kid, dude. Like it's not meant to be creepy. Kids do stupid stuff. Yeah, kids do stupid shit, bro. Kids are curious by nature, okay? But yeah, yeah. like I I will always remember that scene because I thought it was hilarious when I watched it as a kid. Because I'm like, ha! Mm -hmm. He doesn't know the difference between boy and girl. Ha ha ha. ha. And then the whole the monkey thing with the whole like seeing full moon, like that was sick, and the Super Saiyans, like, oh my god. Yeah, Dragon that's Ball was kind of my, that's my like first introduction to Toriyama's work too. I think it's probably the same for a lot of people in the West. Yeah, I'd say Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I didn't, I played you know, Chrono I, I, Trigger like a lot later. Hmm. You know, I, I never knew Chrono there was Trigger... a Dragon Ball. What? You you Dragon Ball Z was the first Dragon one. Ball? So yeah, I got into because the, I don't think he, Dragon Ball aired yeah, here. I, I watched Dragon Ball Z and th I, th I thought that was it. I didn't know there was a whole like show before it. Yeah, to, I don't like, you know. I, I think I feel like in the yeah. '90s that probably was a lot of people. They just realized Dragon Ball Z is here. It's being shown on television. Oh, this is this is the first thing. It's so, like oh, that's so weird. What you're specifically but, one of yeah. my I had a local channel on cable growing up that aired anime. Like I thought it was just cartoons. Like it just was an Asian like channel. It's like Channel Seventy Seven, I think, back in the day. Was it stuff it was like, like a... Dragon Ball Z, Sailor yeah, Moon? Yeah, no, no, stuff not like not just Dragon Ball Z, but like Sailor Moon, Saint Seiya, uh, Probably an Pokemon. actual like Dragon Ball. Not not Pokemon. It showed like actual anime. Oh, that's yeah. So I, I was I don't, right? I don't know who who was broadcasting anime back in the early two thousands on cable television. Man, they ahead of their time, man. But I was watching anime at home on tv and that's how i saw dragon ball first because there was an anime channel i just again you know as a kid it's like oh it's just cartoons cartoon channel i used to play a lot of the dbz fighting it there's a lot there's like multiple dbz yeah, fighting same. games now i think oh yeah i love uh, budokai budokai is so fun budokai is nuts <sighs> all right well uh moving on to rest uh, natai peace. yeah rest in peace Akira I... Toriyama. yeah thank you for everything um, all right. Since I'm kind of like, I, I don't want to stay up too late. I will, I will only talk about one thing and Alex will have to excuse me. This is going to be the John and the tie talk for just a bit there. All hey, right? that gives me a chance to go take a piss. Cause I haven't seen this thing. You're going to go do about. that. 
you go do that. So a while ago, you guys mentioned this little show called Has Been Hotel. And right. I happen to now live with a certain someone who was very much into the idea of watching Has Been Hotel. And she was like, really, oh, we should watch that sometime. And she okay. told me about it ages ago. She she like she told me about the songs and we, 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 on the car we would listen to some of them every now and then. And like, okay. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kinda like, sure, I can check it out as well. Like, why not? Uh and went, then we sat down and watched the entire show on Amazon Prime, all eight episodes. Mm-hmm. And I knew and and I don't know how long ago it was, John, that we talked about it. And, was, and you told me about the fiasco with the actors. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. And then you and I, we DM'd about it. And you're like, all right, you got to be on the WTF because I'm going to watch Has Been Hotel. So now that yeah, you I have said I'd watch it. it. Yeah, I, I, so yeah. I watched it. And... So I want to talk with you about it because I have I've thoughts. And we talked about it last time that I'm coming in from like with a diff, like a completely, you could say, I guess, quote unquote, normie. Yeah, you you haven't well, you seen the are pilot, more in, right? Yeah, I haven't seen the pilot. You haven't seen the pilot. You also um, you've seen Hell of a Boss though, but you haven't been like up to date with like all so, the the drama. I've I would seen say seen only with the series. I've seen only. So so she told me about Hell of a Boss, and we um, watched like three episodes after finishing Hasman Hotel. Okay. So I know just a bit about Hell of a Boss. You know, still I know don't that have you a didn't full know that the, um, it, but... I know that you didn't know that Moxie was voiced by the same guy who does Invader Zen. That's insane, bro. Oh, look, that is so look who's nuts. finally oh, joined look who's us. Here. Oh no! Hello. No. Oh, Chinoda's here. Hello, Chinoda. We're talking about Hasman Hotel now. Have oh. you seen it? Have you seen all of it? No, I haven't watched it. You didn't watch it. it? Unless I've met two, I didn't watch it. Okay, I well, forgot to. If you don't want to listen to spoilers about it, then I guess take off your headset or if you don't care um <laughs> I want to go... deep in this. he does care okay so i wanted to go <sighs> into a little background for uh has been hotel so i did not watch it at launch because i i'm a fan of uh hell of a boss i liked the pilot quite a lot and i was you know in i always am wary of watching things that people are hyped up about because like it can't be that good, you know? I, I'm hype adverse. When people are excited for things, it just, like, this higher expectation, it's like, it's it never hits the bar. Like, it rarely ever hits the bar, and it most definitely, usually never, ever goes above my expectations. Quite literally, there's two shows in recent history, right? Free Ren and Chainsaw Man. Which I'm, I'm gonna like, say, this... listen, listen to our free run spoiler cast coming up, and you'll see how far he goes back on this. And... Like I, <laughs> I, I wish I had bad things to say about either of those shows. I don't, and it just far exceeded my expectations. But that's very rare. And there's a handful of anime that met my expectations of what I wanted and expect from the show. So I, because of that, because I have this weird fucking thing with watching shows like that, and that I know about. I I try to temper my expectations, and when I hear people talking about it, it negatively kind of impacts how I, I'm going to view it. And I remember a right. lot of other people that I watch on YouTube, like um, people who talk about cartoons and stuff, like Saber Spark. He reviewed it, and I'm just like, oh, Lord. If he tells me it's complete ass, I'm, I'm going to hate it. But he was, he was like, eh, it's okay. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. That's an okay opinion to have because um, – so the drama surrounding has been hotel like vivzy pop the creator vivian she's kind of a lot of she has a lot of haters um she's been building up this fan base for hell uh for has been hotel for like the last 10 years i think when she originally designed that the characters. old yes she designed the characters a long time ago like with people because the show ju- just came out like uh, two months yeah. ago i think yeah, yeah. yeah the show just came out but the characters it's been a community effort for the last like 10 years to create this show that's insane. like for the characters and designs and everything um and the, would you say like, some of like the the demographic for this original show would be like some of the um uh, i don't want to sound like mean but sort of like people who maybe used to be on tumblr <laughs> <laughs> right it has apt, a bit of that a very Does apt it, do you see astute, what i'm saying a, a very apt way to sum it up and a very astute observation there Nitai. 
because I 100% agree with you here. Thank you. Um, I feel like a crazy person <laughs> thinking about like, it. it it's it. the opposite of a fedora tipping atheist on Reddit. <laughs> no, it's the Tumblr version. It's people like him. Yeah. Or oh, he's on this side now. It's people like him. That guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. Look at that idiot. Anyway, um, so Viv Vivian's uh drama, personal drama aside, with people like hating her for whatever reason, she she's done a lot of weird things and she doesn't back down or say sorry and stuff like that. But her aside, um, there was the huge drama of the people when A twenty four picked it up. Uh, as people feared, they decided, or it is assumed that A twenty four was like, hey. We want a professional um, voice actor cast. And no one really knows what happened. No one can talk about it because NDAs. And the only reason I think that A24 did that is because, as far as I know, uh, one person who was on the old pilot did speak out and said, you know, I'm very sad that I don't get to work with this, this thing that we created. Because, again, all the people who worked on the pilot are people who have been voice acting for a while. They're well-known online. But they're not as popular as like Keith David, that's for sure, or Stephanie Beatrice. It's still like, crazy that Keith David is in this fucking weird show. Yeah, I know, but it's so, so weird. <laughs> people were upset that um, the studio didn't fight to keep the old voice actors. But again, I get it. You know, when when you get bought, when you're being produced by a studio, they kind of get the final calls. It's their money. You can't do anything about that. Okay, it's their call. Uh, so I, I pieced it together. The main based issue off the is that factor. we don't know enough about what happened, I guess. Yeah, well. we don't know what happened. So this is yeah. all just speculation. Um, this is what I think happened because the guy that voiced one of the characters did say, like, uh, I wish I, I, I would rather work with a company that would fight for my talent, which leads me to believe that they probably were suggested by A24, hey, we're going to get this new talent. So sucks. Um, I will say. The people that A24 hired, or the new voice cast for uh, Hasbun Hotel, phenomenal. I I want to start off by talking about Hasbun Hotel, what I liked about it, right? Okay. Um, I like the music aspect. I like the singing. Um, kind of weird that there, it felt like there was two two new songs every episode. And I'm just like, this because is a lot of were, budget yeah. that they're just singing for no reason. Sounds are like, super short as well. Like two minutes yeah, max. Like I I liked most of the songs. I I had no complaints with the singing. So I'm like I'm glad that they got Broadway trained uh, voice actors to be here, because amazing. You know, uh, I I completely forgot that Keith David could sing because I completely forgot he was in The Princess and the Frog. He was great in The Princess and the Frog. Yeah, he I was got the, friends the, the on man. the other side. Yeah, but I, I that's completely the forgot thing. About that. it, it's, you, you you just said get Keith David singing in that movie and in this show, and I'm like. Obviously, it's a very different style of songwriting, and the music is different, and I get that. And first mm -hmm. of all, no disrespect to anyone who was working on this show. Like, I'm not trying to, like, there's a lot of effort being put on this play. You can tell, like, the people working on, on it <clears throat> really care. At, at least it feels like that way, because it's a very specific, weird kind of vision. And I'm, I do think it's cool that it exists, but there's something about this songwriting that I just can't get into. Uh, we talked about it, but there are only two songs that I liked in this first right. season, because most of the singing is like is like a character being like, "I'm talking this dying in this dialogue," and da 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 da, and then you talk about your dialogue. It's like I know like what Broadway is, but in here it feels so like I don't yeah. know if artificial is the word, but it's something's off for me. So. Again, I want to talk about the accolades that I'm going to give to the show first before I completely mm. rip it apart. Uh, because I I am of the opinion that it wasn't terrible. I also don't think it was as good as I wanted it. But at the same time, that more of comes with the writing of the show. And I think that it just needed more time. If it had 12 episodes instead of 8, I think it could have it could easily rectify it's my a, problems a with the watch, show. Yeah. It's um, a very quick watch. So... I think that the you know outside of the music talent, I also think the the storyline that they did with uh, Angel Dust phenomenal. I loved Angel Dust's story. I That's wish I wanted to see this, more of that. Season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of the weird Angel Dust and Husk Husker like shipping that the, the I I the don't like that sh that shipping. I, I know. Like I also don't like that ship. I'm like they can't just and be for, good for buddies. For some reason, like... <laughs> we, bro, dude. Like I was having a conversation with my girlfriend about it, and I was like, yeah, like I like the songs for that episode. But I don't think it's a good shipping. It's like, no, but it's okay. And I'm like, 
bro fucking invaded his private like space like mm-hmm. for four episodes and now you're telling me they're about to fuck like no oh no don't and see don't that's like the it. thing like the beauty of it to me about uh husker and angel dust's relationship at that point is that husker he, he sees like angel dust for what he really is a fake because yeah. and then it's like it, then we learn about the real reason why angel dust is actually like hurting on the inside i'm just like this is real dialogue this is real character development yeah. i love shit like this it's raw it feels really yeah like, it's like it's you know very this man has never had this angel dust has never had someone be an actual friend to him and actually cared like to the extent that husk is showing him care right now yeah. which is like you know rip off your bullshit and be yourself and then it's like, what if I'm too broken to be myself? What if no one loves me if I'm I'm from myself? And he's like, who fucking cares? Everyone's broken a little bit. And I'm just like, I resonate with this. This is yeah. a great freaking message. Fucking um, Poison is like the best song in this season as well. It's like that that song is like, whoa. Again, the so We're Loser good. song was pretty good too with Keith David. I really yeah. liked it. Again, best episode of the season has the best two songs from the entire season as well. And then It's Gonna Be a Good Day in Hell was a good song too. I love that. Um, I... I really was disappointed with the rest of the story. Like, outside of the Angel Dust and Husker stuff, I was disappointed with the rest, unfortunately. Because it's like, I I remember you said, uh, you you were like, Charlie is kind of just a whatever character. She's, like, boring. And I'm just like, she, oh, I no. Said, she, she's that, my least favorite character. Yeah, she's your least really favorite character. Like and I'm like, that kind of sucks because I think, you know, Charlie is kind of the main character of the series because she's the the one who started this whole entire thing and we kind of follow her but i also was like she's so one-dimensional of of a character like i i wanted to love more yeah just the music and the angel dust stuff from the show i i really did i want they even joke about it how it's like oh it's like a naive little princess yeah it's like oh and she has daddy issues it's like oh but that's really all she has and then they resolve the daddy issues it's like what character do you have it's like uh... yeah it's like she's it's it's a weird vibe because from the outset how we're introduced to the story uh i will say episode zero does set up a little bit more of the story so you kind of have to watch the pilot like you don't know why like alistair i'll go back and watch the pilot just for like to 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 get more just to understand like why is alistair there because basically that's not a real question that bothered me too much because i was was sort of like letting i mean i personally i you know i personally care about setup like that but it does link to it from here's, you know, watch the pilot episode zero. And then it explains like why Charlie is doing this entire thing anyway, even though they kind of, mm-hmm. they sum it up really well in episode one anyway, but it's like, okay, but we don't learn. We got to learn a little bit more and they do like pull the uh, veil off a little bit. So we can learn more about like who Alistair really is like with the whole Mimsy thing and learning about Alistair and, you know, the, cool design, um, by the way, I do like Alistair's design. Yeah. And, um, I thought it was weird that they how they did the sound mixing for Alistair because he's supposed to be right? he's supposed to have that filter on all the time and sometimes because they he's drop the radio it. Demon. Yeah, I, I was like, I don't know why they drop it at times. They should have just kept it on the entire time. Like it would be fine if they dropped it to make a point of like he's saying something to make a point, but they drop yeah. it at awkward times where he's not making a point. He's just saying something. He's just talking, and it's like it's kind of weird. It's a weird sound something, mixing choice. Something else that like really. Like the more I thought about it, like it felt like there were some cracks in in the writing. Is sometimes like so they set up these plot points. They're like, oh, so this is like a major thing that that's crazy. But when you think about it, it's like, how come in this story that supposedly like you know this place has a history of thousands of years, only at this point of time does this shit happen? Like, like they have this whole thing about oh heaven is like. It's like not all heaven knows about them exterminating hell. It's like why does how come only now they find out that that's what they're doing? It's like it's there's some cool ideas there, and I do like the sort of setup, like the world that they're trying to set up, and, and I like that the world has uh, openings for more stuff and side stories to be like you can tell like there's a whole world out there that can be taken, like you can tell stories with, but it's like it right. feels so events happen now just because they they could have happened way before it's like it, there's a big a big deal about them killing an angel but it's like so you're telling me no one in history ever tried to kill an angel it's like well no they tried but know. they didn't understand why they were able they didn't understand how they could be able to do it yeah it's I, it just there's a lot of questions so that have been raised 
Yeah, I guess. but but you have all these powerful beings there, like all the overlords. Like no one ever tried like try to crack at like killing an angel. There's a reason. Oh, in that, which is, is they, because yeah, the reason is that they don't want to fuck with the status. They like being lords in hell, bro. Who cares? Who cares about rebelling against the the angels when but I can literally live in hell an overlord? But but that's the thing. Literally, an overlord kills an angel because uh, I don't remember her name. She had. Oh, I hate the um, song that she has Car later in the Camilla? season. Camilla. Carmilla, Camilla. Was. Oh, yeah. The fucking flamenco song she has later in the. I I don't like that song at all. Yeah, uh, that that song was not the best. Okay. Thank you. I feel so validated. <laughs> uh, I hate this. This fucking soundtrack is being played all the time here. Um, uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but, but it's like, so she kills an angel to protect her family, or whatever. That never happened in the thousands of years they've been. Uh, these kind of questions like come up when you think about it too much. It's like, I, I don't know. Mm. It's weird. Well, so the works. thing is that so for the the exterminators, right? The um, exorcists, the angels that come down to Adam, exercise, right? For all of them, they are supposed to attack basically non discriminately, but they have a thing where it's like, okay, there are certain people we won't touch, which is basically the the people who are ruling hell, right? You have the 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 actual um, lords of hell, right? Family. There's like, like the royal families, right? Um, if you watch Hell of a Boss, you'll understand. Like, there's the Goetia as well. There's so we just the... watched that of the uh, Goetia. Yeah, pretty cool. And like, the writing is, is really weak in in the Hasbin Hotel. Out like compared to Hell of a Boss, because I feel like every character outside of angel dust uh didn't get enough development like we don't understand anything about anyone ever a lot of them are very one-dimensional outside of husk really he's definitely the most developed character yeah yeah and it's like that's like my biggest issue with the writing in hasbin hotel that vaggy is so one-sided dimensional like oh i'm an ex-soldier i'm moody and broody and i've been lying to you this entire time and then there's I don't know Carl, why her performance I'm felt super, so flat. I'm super, super you know? happy-go-lucky hell princess who sometimes rages. And then she's so, I'm so sorry. And I'm just like, they're so one-dimensional, you know? And, like, obviously we're not supposed to know anything about Alistair. Uh, I will give props to the sound effect design for whoever the, um, that spider dude was. I don't actually remember his name anymore. Who? one of the overlords the spider guy the green spider guy oh that one i did like that character i i liked his sound effect for the name or for mm -hmm. uh for when he talked because it's the basically it's the protoss sound effect from star Trek. yeah <laughs> and i'm like oh my god could he please say my life for ire <laughs> can you please tell me not you must construct additional pylons i need to hear these words i haven't heard these I words was in so long I was wondering what you thought of the tone because I talked about it last time how it kind of had a like a whiplash effect with it because that angel does step so oh, that, like the perfect example. Yeah, so there's a lot of tonal whiplash because it's like all right, so we have like we set up from episode one. Here is the idea. Here's the premise of the show. Yeah, and then we see that she does absolutely nothing to really kickstart her plan. We kind of just follow the. The failings of Charlie, and we watch the characters yeah. slightly grow. And the only one who really experiences like character depth and growth is Angel, Angel. Dust. Yeah. And then the rest kind of just like fall into line. And then it doesn't make sense of like, like it makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense like the end when it's like okay after the whole fighting in the war and um, Adam gets his ass kicked by Lucifer. Why does um, Pentius, Sir Pentius, whatever the snake dude? Yeah. Why is he's he now, now in, heaven. in heaven? Yeah, and then it's because like because he changed. Leaves... Yeah, and it's like even... It, and even the angels don't know what happened. And I'm just like, you know, there was a way better show that talks about heaven and hell, and the um absurdity of heaven and their rules. Talking about and the stuff. good place. I'm talking about the good place. <laughs> Fucking awesome show. Way good better place. show that's it's about great that. Show. <laughs> that if you want to watch a funny show that has way better characters and character development go watch the good place it's kind of it tackles the exact same philosophical theme. as well yeah it's it's a great show it's a fantastic show but all the way yeah through. to me i i feel like the reason i like hell of a, a boss a lot more than i like hasman hotel because hell of a boss at least has more interesting characters and there's more depth 
like at least no, i wouldn't say for uh millie or moxie because they, they're kind of just whatever but like the whole luna thing with um oh my god what's his name the big imp dude who fucks the goetia uh, guy Bo blitz Bo's blitz the... blitz yeah blitz, like, blitz without a the no. character yeah, Blitz, there's the O is so silent, stupid. bitch. So stupid. And in, in Hell of a Boss, it makes more sense why they curse and swear all the time in Hell of a Boss because they're all imps and demons and stuff. Like, hell, they're lower hell spawn. It doesn't make sense, and it feels so out of place in Hasbun Hotel. Thank it's you. Like, That's what I was talking about. I knew I wasn't crazy for thinking that. Yeah, so I thought when you told me that you had a problem with that, I was just like, well, in Hell of a Boss, they curse a lot, but that makes sense because they're, they're they're kind of they're rough workers, you know? They, they kind of do dirty contracts and they're assassins. I'm like, I, that's how I expect these type of people to speak. But yeah. for people uh, in Hasbun Hotel, it's like... All of them do it all the all goddamn them. time. Yeah, it's like they just... Un they swear unnecessarily. Like, I thought it would have been like really cool. Yeah. I thought it would have been really cool if Charlie never swore. Because, you know, she's supposed to be a Disney princess, you know. Of, mm -hmm. Even though she's a princess of hell, she's still a princess. So I thought it'd be cool if they made it so she never swore at all. That would have been a lot more interesting. Yeah. Um, it's like a, the, the swearing is like, a, it's like a, a crutch for the writing. It's like they need to fill space, or like airspace. They have to be like, you talk about something like that, fucking bitch, something a bit con. It's like, does it really add something? And again, I'm not against swearing. It's just so, it's everywhere. You yeah, know? it's kind of just used to make like a to emphasize like this part should be funny. You should be laugh because haha profanity. It's it's very yeah. lowbrow, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, so I, I'm I, all for it. it. Just feels so out of place, you know. Because yeah, every it's, character it's, to me, it's, it's lowbrow entertainment. And yeah, I again, I wanted to like Hasman Hotel because I really like the pilot. Um, I hate that it basically ends at episode eight and it's like, well, just wait for next season. And I believe it, it already got greenly for a season two. So we'll, we'll have a season two. There's eventually. potential for it to be way more interesting the next season, but eh, it's fine. I, it, it's just fine. You know, I totally get that. It's not a show for me. That was my main takeaway. Cause so like I saw it with my girlfriend, how she was like, she got really, she really connected to it and she really like and a lot of people did which is really fucking cool because again especially with the angel dust episode that's like an episode that deals with a lot of heavy stuff and right. well i personally didn't really connect with it that much i could appreciate it for what it was i can you totally could still see. feel even though yeah. you couldn't personally connect with I it you still, still feel it feel empathetic towards it because it's yeah like, this is really fucked up. yeah you know it's a, it's a situation that we even if you've never experienced you don't you can understand you can the gravity of it. With. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, you know, I the the fact that him and um Val Valentino Val, yeah, Valentino, that Angel Dust yeah. and Val had like this toxic relationship, right? It was like it's the perfect uh, descriptor of a, a toxic relationship where it's like constantly being love bombed by this person after they fucking beat you up, and you know they hit you and they fucking choke you out. Yeah, and they just they keep doing things to hurt you for fun, but then they're so apologetic afterwards and like. The you know he's basically like I own you bitch I own your soul and it's like nothing you do it's like that's it resonated with me like that type of story I'm just like yeah that's yeah. really fucked up um I that wish whole they story did that. that whole section was like wow that was like really yeah. powerful and that's why a lot of fans connected with Angel Dust and I saw on on YouTube a cosplay couple that was saying basically um hey we love all you fans of Hasbun Hotel. But if you're under 18, please do not send us your cosplays, especially if you're cosplaying someone like Angel Dust. Because oh apparently there's kids under the age of 18 cosplaying Angel Dust and, like, mimicking. And Angel Dust is a porn star in this universe, and they're, like, mimicking his manner. I wouldn't and stuff. And know if like, he's a great role model for kids. <laughs> I, I think, you know, kids are, they take on what they watch, right? They download new personalities. We've discussed this before. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to stop kids from doing that. Uh, also weird that Amazon was like, yeah, it's rated 16 plus. And I'm like, shouldn't this be 18 plus? <laughs> like, wait, why is it 16, 16 plus? plus like, on Amazon hell? Prime? That's kind of... Uh, I know. I was like, that's kind of a sucks. weird rating since it's there's like blood and guts and li quite literally like orgy gangbang sex like in one of the episodes. All but, over you know, the place. Like, it's not explicit, but it's he's shooting porn. Yeah. That like, episode, he's no shooting way porn. around it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of so weird. I'm just like it's it's weird that it wasn't 18 plus, but uh, I digress. But um, yeah, I I wish the character writing really was a lot stronger two? in the show. I'm probably gonna watch season two, but now that 
I've seen season one and I tried to temper my expectations and I'm glad I did. I, I was right. It didn't live up to what I wanted it to be. But again, I, I feel like that's the, the short episode count to blame. I feel like there's more of a story that could have been written. Uh, I don't know if it's the short episode count. I think it's like for me personally, just like the, 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 um, the, um, hmm, I want to like the style of writing is just something that like I can't get over too much you know maybe it's just like the that, that's like the foundation of the show because again yeah, like mean, most of the music i didn't enjoy that much as well the entire point is that you know they're demons and they're angels but it's you know they, but they have a place in heaven too and they, they can be reformed yeah. yeah but it's like okay but they're demons and they're sinners so they got to be they, they're supposed to be rough they're supposed to be always cursing and this and that and it's like oh yeah i get it but like to to just I don't like the fact that the dialogue just includes it all the time, just for seemingly no reason. Like they didn't have yeah. to curse here, but they did. It's all the time. Yeah, but I'm glad we I'm glad we had this this small chat because I feel so validated after the last time where we're like <laughs> I spoke my chat. mind. I'm like maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, and I know we bore I mean, Alex to turn out of their minds. <laughs> I, I mean, you can. I don't you, care. You can tell Chinoda he can come back. We're done talking about. Yeah, uh, Chinoda can come back. back. I'll have to get his attention in the in this. I think he's reading chat. So (laughs) there you go. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, get yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's watching the camera. It's fine. Yeah. So for me personally, I'll probably watch season two, but I've tempered my expectations, and I, I just, yeah, I, I just feel validated (laughs) now. I don't think you should feel bad. For not liking a show that a lot of people like because i i personally don't care what people think that much of, like whether they like it or not. <laughs> oh that is great. such bullshit i fucking <laughs> temper my expectations based on what other people say come on no, I temper other my people like it therefore i must hate it come on yeah Actually, and I, if, I, if, if other podcast, people like it talking about if the other people like it and i think it's trash then i am proud of that opinion and... You just said you you went into free run hoping to hate it. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I didn't say that's that. That's the contrarian that's a... in him. I didn't say that at all. That is a misquote, sir. You have okay. said that. You have said that. You I have said, said that before. No, find it. The Show me the receipts. Where's the receipt? Where are the receipts? I said, I, I went into free run thinking it can't be that good. I, I'm never looking for things to shit on. In fact, I said... I couldn't find anything shit on, which is odd because I usually find some stuff to shit on in any show I watch. Because regardless of whether or not I like a show or whether I think the show is good, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, I will find faults with it because that's just how I am. I analyze the show. I can separate my enjoyment with like the quality of a show that I have a standard for. It's fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, you expected you expected it not to be as good as people said it was. Yeah, because do you know how many times people blow like the like all the if I were to go into watching Hasbun Hotel based off of what my wife thought of the show, I would be <laughs> shitting on the show so much harder. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew nothing about Hasbun Hotel from the get go, like Natai went in blind and I went to watch it based off of what like uh my wife said, I would be shitting on her opinion so hard. <laughs> That's like why. But as someone who has you. prior knowledge, right, I think that you're you're validated in feeling that way because I, I don't think it was that great. But I, I see there's good parts of it, and I, I hope that they continue to craft it and make it better with more it's time. Um, I also understand that with, like, the new cast, like, they may be professionals, but the the previous cast members had so much longer to work on it to get into the characters and have a lot mm. more passion for it like obviously you know professionals are professionals they can perform their roles well but it's like do they really absolutely love their role like the previous voice actors did you, you will we'll never know i will say i'm glad we got a chance to talk because i'm gonna bounce out because it's 1 a.m they do need okay. to go to bed but it was a All really right. fun talk and I feel super validated now. <laughs> That's all I need in the world. I don't. I honestly don't understand why, Natai, that you need me to validate your opinions. Like, oh, no, as, no, as long as just, John agrees with me, as long no, no, as no, no, John it, has it, the it, same it, opinion. As I've I've been hearing a different opinion than than like than what I thought. And I felt I felt maybe it's like I'm seeing this show from a really different perspective and just not clicking. So hearing right. someone else say the same things I said, like, okay, maybe it's not so far fetched that I don't click with this show at all, you know? Yeah. 
And I, I agree with you. I think that it's very popular with the Tumblr kids. <laughs> I, I knew it. I fucking knew it. That's I what I got what... away from this entire like conversation. Listening to it, it's like this is a show for Tumblr kids. It and really listen, is. if you're it if really you're that, you will love this show. You will just love like how this Rick show. and Morty is for Reddit mods. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's so true. It's so it true. true. So accurate. Anyway, anyway, I go. I hope you guys you have a nice monetized. rest of the stream. Wait, I'm gonna time before sleep. you leave. Before you leave. What? The fuck happened to your hair? You look like a raging queer. Oh Whoa. my god! What the? Wow. Fuck? Oh, I love I it. Don't not, get me wrong. But what queer. happened? What the actual fuck? The tie is knuff, bro. He is knuff. He is knuff. <laughs> oh right, I thought that was a wig you were wearing. <laughs> See, I'm no. not the only one that thought that. No, it, it, I, so she dyed my hair. I dressed up as Nanami for a party from Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. Is Chinona watch Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah. Yeah, of course he watches is. it. I don't know if he pays attention to what goes on in the private chats because he would have seen it. No, I, that's what I'm saying. I saw it and I saw a picture of him and I was like, oh, cool. He you dressed as uh, tie, Nanami. Though. I had the tie as well. How come you didn't notice the, the fucking tie he wears? Yeah, what? The, no, the I did. The print tie? I, I, I wore a tie and like we dyed it black. <laughs> black dots like Nanami. No, I saw the cosplay. I recognize it. I was just wondering, like, that's I thought you were wearing hair. a yep. wig. No, that's it, why I was like, wait, dyed that's Natai's hair. hair. Yeah. No, he committed to the bit. He committed uh, way, way too hard to the bit. <laughs> no, no, no. When, when, when your girlfriend really wants to do something, you just go with it, and it's fine. Hey, I, I'm not going to tell you not to do it, because that would be stupid. <laughs> Anyway, it's great to have you on and Ty, as always. You know, have a good night. Have a good night. Like Bye, how, guys. I like how did, I like how Chinoda comes in and his literally his first thing is raging queer. It's like, God damn it, Chinoda. <sighs> Listen, well, have better a good string, introduction. <laughs> yeah, gonna clip that. We're gonna cancel Chinoda. The Tumblr kids yeah. are coming after you, Chinoda. <laughs> Buddy, I am one of the Tumblr kids. I know, oh, I know you're one. Of the <laughs> we know. <laughs> when we were pointing at you, that's exactly what we were saying. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Yeah, that's what I was doing when I was pointing at you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, All right. oh, I did want to ask you, Chinoda, since you're here. Oh, now, no. I had a question. All right. Part of our okay. Discord question part. Um Oh, the, the the song thing? The last song that you listened to is now your stand. So the artist name is gonna be your stand name, and the artist and the song title, like the song name, is gonna be your stand power. So what is the last song that you listened to? Let's find out. Uh, oh, so he's got to go to the, the, the log book, too. Well, it's either going to be on Spotify or on YouTube. Just go with Spotify. Listening history. <clears throat> Dude's actually going through the books. <laughs> he's just checking the receipts. <laughs> Well, while he does that, um, this is not a sponsored ad, but hey, did you guys know that Coca-Cola has a new fucking flavor called Spiced? I did know it. I haven't Evan tried it yet. Evan just though. bought that because he saw uh, he saw that, and uh, we were both like, what the fuck? How I is it? What does it taste like? It just tastes like spiced Coca-Cola. I, I can't explain it. There's like cinnamon in here. Yeah, I like, like it a lot. So it's like spiced rum. It's a cinnamon-flavored rum. Yeah, like I feel like if I mix this with uh, rum, it would taste amazing. Yeah, I probably would. Or just as a mixture. I think this is a good like call. Like I know that Coca Cola has been always has been experimenting in the last couple of years with new flavors. Like they had like Dream World and like the other ones. I don't remember the other ones. They've they had been coffee doing... and Coke. That's always been a thing, and that's gross. I don't like the coffee Coke. That one. I like it. I can't get it no more. But I like it. It's not good. It is. I love it. I think that Coca Cola needs to take a a page out of the playbook from Mountain Dew and like release flavors. And if they perform well, keep them out forever. So do like limited time stuff. And then if it does super well, you just keep it. Yeah. Like, Kinda like Mountain how Mountain Dew. Dew did with code red back in the day, code red voltage, which is the blueberry one. Um, they're permanent Baja blast. Per Baja blast. That was Taco Bell only. And it was so popular that they finally decided, Hey, after the everyone should have it. <laughs> 
I think it, talk about had an exclusive contract for like I think a year or something. So they couldn't. It was over that. a year, way over yeah, a year. Yeah, it was like two or three year, years. Two? Yeah, it was, it was a long time. But once that expired, Mountain Dew was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got. I mean, get it's free money. money for them. Yeah, but I think Coca Cola should do it more often. Like I understand that the reason why Coke doesn't do it is because it's every time they've done it, they failed. Right? Uh, New Coke. Right? Everyone hated that. Um, when they transitioned to uh, the worst performing Coke that they ever had outside of New Coke, because they didn't even sell New Coke before people shit all over it, was the um, Coca Cola like sugar thing. It was like it was in a green can. It was a weird green Coca Cola can. Yeah, it was like like it, it was like this weird non sugar Coca Cola that everyone hated. I don't remember what it was. It was just this other thing that Coke had that performed piss poorly. Like it made up maybe only one percent of their sales, and they spent so much money developing it. Oof. So because of that incident, Coca Cola did not want to do this ever again. So like, fuck it, we're only gonna do Diet Coke, Coke Zero, and regular Coke. Those are our three Cokes. That's it, forever. And they signed a lot of um, Coke Life. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about, Orc. <laughs> Whatever Coke Life was, I don't remember. Oh, what. I, I remember that it was the one that was made with like stevia or some shit, wasn't it? It was garbage. It was that's what it was. It was absolutely now, how garbage. long ago was this? This is like ten years ago. Yeah, okay. something like a decade ago. And um, because of that, you know, Coke was like, "Fuck it, we're not going to do that." We sell insane amount of money through going making people sign exclusivity contracts with us anyway. That's how Coke actually makes much much of their money. It's not through their can sales. It's a combination of can sales plus exclusivity contracts. That's how they've locked down the market for so long. By and the collabs. Way. They do collabs a lot too. Yeah, just like how Pepsi, the only way Pepsi got popular was because they started locking down exclusivity um, contracts as well. Like I think it was, is it Taco Bell that uh, is Pepsi only? I believe it's Taco Bell. Uh, yeah, I think Taco like the Bell reason is... why Taco Bell exists in this day and age is because of Pepsi. I think it's the only like major fast food brand that's Pepsi only. Uh, I, think... I know that. I'm pretty sure Papa John's is Pepsi as well. Are they? I think so. Or maybe. maybe well, yeah, it's I think. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I honestly, no, uh, don't it's, quote it's... me. No, no, Domino's is Coke. Because you can get Cherry Coke at Domino's. But my point is. I wish Coke would experiment more and then just keep these on rotation. Like, I hope they keep spiced out forever. Like, I hope that this is a forever thing because they made a zero version of it, but that doesn't mean much. They have they have zero versions of a lot of their drinks because I'm diabetic and I want to drink Coke. <laughs> they had one. Uh, I don't know if they still have it. I can't find any more around here, but they had one for a while that was like a ginger lime Coke. I love that shit. I've heard good things about that one. I've never tried it, though. Hmm. Legal uh, Legends flavored either, Coke. Yeah. What does that taste like? Sweat? Probably fart ass. Oh, the League of fart. Legends one was gross. Yeah, I hated that. That just uh, tasted remember, like John. cotton candy and bananas or something. Do you remember Mountain uh, Dew Game Fuel yeah, though, John? That shit was bomb. <laughs> I Mountain vaguely Dew remember Game that. Fuel. That was when oh. uh, Halo Three came out. They did a huge promotion with that, and it was like it was. I don't think they maybe they still make the flavor and they just call it something else now. But I they still have too. the Mountain Dew Game Fuel stuff. What I don't think it's about? the same flavor though. No, and probably not. But they they have those. Um, Mountain Dew has a lot of weird flavors. <laughs> they no. do. They like you're right though. They experiment a lot, and they just they keep what works and they get rid of what doesn't. Yeah. And now, I wish John. More companies would do that what's up i have oh, yeah, an answer song. for you yeah. yeah finally okay oh it is savior by rise against oh my god okay so your stand name is rise against savior <laughs> that's a pretty strong ability okay like yeah just starts a shield just one blocks anything just a fucking impenetrable shield okay <laughs> Oh, I explain. Look. No, you got to explain your stand power, bro. Okay. H oh. How does Savior work? How does Rise Against work? Savior is a. Hmm. Normally, I research these, but I completely forgot to look it up. Um. Savior is a support stand that has the 
ability to heal all others from death at the very last moment. Okay. It's a very specific stand and can be only used situationally, but it is the savior. Okay. All right. That's my on the spot. <laughs> it's better than my stand. <laughs> <laughs> what was your stand? What was Mine was BB Mac, a ghost of you and me. I was like, how does this work? I don't know. Teleport with ghosts. Let's go. <laughs> ghost of you and me. You can just like just teleport between us. I can put a ghost and attach it to you, and then I can teleport the ghost and you to where I am. We just swap mine spots, was, basically. Mine was Rush's subdivisions. Just subdivisions. Subdivisions right. of <laughs> Kage Bushin no Jutsu. I don't know. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Alex just had Kage Bushin no Jutsu. Yeah. Damn. Uh, at least me and John came up with something. <laughs> I would. I came up with something. It makes sense. Subdivide sure. myself I think and attack. Pretty, from... I think everyone's stand powers were way cooler than mine. Maybe not Jacobs. Jacobs was Miku by Anamano Gucci. <laughs> I Amano, mean, the ties. No, not, whatever. Natai's was saying. like so OP because it was black. Uh, no, uh, what was it? It was Muse, Muse. Super Black uh, Hole or whatever. Yeah. Yo, oh, that black sounds hole. cool. What yeah, was it? Massive Black Hole. Is it literally as it yes. sounds? Yes. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Yes. But That's I was so like, cool. I could counter that though because I could just sand out ghosts of you and me and then we'll just swap when you shoot me with the super massive black hole. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's so a fun kinda, question, actually. It is. Jo John, in his drunken stupor, added that to the doc last night. Uh, <laughs> I No, no, no. I thought of this question before that, um, but I remembered to put it on the doc while I was drunk this morning. <laughs> uh, so I kind of brought this up earlier when I, I mentioned Helldivers 2. I want to go back to it slightly. Do you remember last month when we did the WTF and I said that I'd kind of like realized that D&D &D games kind of weren't for me? Yeah. I think I found a D&D &D game for me. It's called Helldivers 2. <laughs> it's not D&D. &D. It is 100% a D&D &D game. 100%. How? Okay, explain. What? Okay, you go out in a party, just like D&D. &D, you have a party. Okay. And, you know, with Helldivers, you're limited to four. But, hey, a party of four is still a party. You have yeah. a game master. His name is Joel. Stratagems are like uh, spells and cantrips. Okay. Um... Obviously, your guns are like the weapons you take with you, whether you're talking about, you know, bows and arrows or uh, swords, whatever. I mean, what more do you need? It's just D&D &D without dice. And also, you got random encounters. Like, that's the enemies you fight are essentially random encounters in D&D. &D. Plus, you have, uh, like, main objectives, which when you have a D&D &D campaign, usually there's a main objective. And you can have sub-objectives in D&D &D campaigns. The only thing that's really missing is NPCs that you interact with that actually have any kind of um, uh, Presence. outcome in the I, world. I'm with Jacob on this. It does sound like a reach. Like I think you're oversimplifying what D and D is. I, this is exactly the kind of D and D experience I want. Oh, it's you catered, have a, like, a, a very catered sandbox thing of D and D. I still think I think Helldivers Two is a D and D experience, a D and D like experience. I feel like you can I, I view it so. from that perspective, but I think that's personal. Like overall, no. I, I I have to disagree. No, I I can. So I will say, uh, part of game development. You know, talking to a, a specific game developer prior a couple years ago, he's like, being a DM is very similar to being a game designer, because you're always trying to do stuff for you're you're trying to craft a experience for people and you want them to experience it a certain way mm -hmm. and you can't let them realize that you're forcing them to essentially experience it this way um so that's where it's like okay I can see the similarities because that's how game design is you craft an experience for your players right just like if you're a dm mm -hmm. and you want them to experience it in a certain way and it's up to you as the dm to guide them to how you want them to experience it. But I will say, uh, as DMing goes, as a lot of game developers and developers in general understand, not everyone's going to experience the game the same way. People are going to find ways to break it. People are going to min-max. People are going to do whatever the fuck. 
So you yeah, can't gonna, really account They're going to try and get out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, they're going to do weird, like, they're going to do what I do, find God Rock, and literally just sit on top of here and kill everything. Yeah. And not hey, be God, touched. God Rock, is, God Rock is a very powerful place to be in Helldivers, man. God Rock is that, oh, you weren't there when we were playing with AJ yesterday, or uh, two days ago, where, like, I was on God Rock, and Joel just said, fuck you for sitting on God Rock, and yeeted me, so we lost Wait, the samples. What? Oh yeah. no! Yeah, we lost the supers in one game because I was on God Rock and we were like doing really well, and then for whatever reason, the Pelican came in and fucking just shot me, and I got yeeted off the cliff and died. Damn. And I Damn had the samples. Pelican pilot was like, "Fuck you, you lazy bitch." Yeah, it was fucked, dude. <laughs> I'm like, Joel, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you, Joel? So it does feel like I was punished for being on God Rock, but. Uh, yeah. Sometimes so I, the DM does I, have to slap you a little bit when you play, man. <laughs> so that's why I can understand your point of view, right? Mm. I don't agree with your point of view because I think DM, D, like D and D, is a lot deeper than that. Like, if you want to boil things to its basics, like that's basically all games in general. Yeah, it's just it's just game design. Whether you're talking about a video game or a tabletop game or whatever, yeah, it's just game in general. That's what I mean. So that's why I'm like, it's not really D and D. That's my point. It feels like a D and D experience to me. Like you're not and you role know what? playing That's fair. characters. You're not um, rolling. There's no stats. There's no charisma checks or anything like that. Like you're missing exactly. Half of the... That's <laughs> why I like it. So Buddy, basically, that's the not D and D at that point. <laughs> yeah, you, you I disagree. Like, I still feel like it's D and D. If you take out the core things about D and D, that's the best type of D and D. Like, do you want to... I agree. Like, that yes. makes no sense. That 100%. makes zero sense. That makes best, no sense, though. You're the saying best the best D and D is, one... is not playing D and D. That's what you're saying. Yes, it's playing Helldivers too. <laughs> Alex, shut the fuck up. I'm just saying, I feel like this is the kind of D and D experience I want. I want the to feel like I'm in sort of an action adventure setting, and I feel like I get to actually role play in Helldivers two more than I've ever gotten to role play in D and D. I've never. I seen think a lot of that comes Helldiver. from the fact I that the character, no the character you play in Helldivers two, is kind of this faceless character. So I feel right. like it's easy to kind of like fill that role as a player. Alex, this is betrayal. <laughs> I'm just saying, I feel like this is the kind of D&D &D experience that I want. Like, freaking Super Earth. Yes. For democracy. For democracy. <laughs> sweet liberty, it? my leg. Oh, sweet liberty, <laughs> my leg. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Dude, I just want to play Helldivers. Can we just change this to a Helldivers stream? <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night, I will be playing Helldivers on stream. Uh, I might not be able to, to join. join. I, I have to go get my wife from the convention. Oh, that's a shame. The uh, last Helldivers two stream was nuts. Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, I'm glad I sat I, out I, because it would not have been that nuts if I was there because I'm too good at the game now. No, I still think you would have just sat back and watched the magic happen, John. See, the problem is that I have no chill. So the minute, like, the game gets hard and it's like, hey, like, it's like I have to engage real gamer mode now. <laughs> like, it's I have like, to lean forward in my chair. <laughs> it's like that meme where I've you're seen just it happen like, with John. You're kind, of, yeah, you're kind I... of just playing. He's playing like this and all of a sudden real shit, he just leans in. <laughs> like, leans in <laughs> like, all right. Because I, I played a game like that yesterday where I, I, I came into a, a tier five with these two other guys and, like, they had two lives left. And I'm like, holy crap. How do you only have two lives left? And John's like, all right, time to rescue these scrubs. Yeah, I did. I fucking beat it for them. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I clear we went to Malevolon Creek, boy. I cleared it. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Just why would you even go there? Just to flex. That to I had the most kills. I had no deaths. Like I I fucking carried these guys. I get to the end screen and it's just like the main uh, the lead the host, 24 deaths, the other guy, 17 deaths, and I'm like, holy crap, how? How is that possible? I'm pretty sure it was less than that, but it's like it was a lot of deaths. They used up all of the, the freaking lives. They sucked. The, the 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 interesting thing for me about playing Helldivers 2, especially with John, is that over the years playing games with John, even though we haven't done it like a whole lot, I think John is at the point now where he feels like he's got to carry me through everything. Um, oh, I feel but... like that in every game I play. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, not just Helldivers 2. Um, well, it's just but, so rare for me to get carried in games. 
you said that you said once last week or week before that this is like level 50s that had to carry your ass. Well, because when I was still level 21, I was queuing up into a, a tier like four to do like a daily or no, a tier two. I was trying to queue up into a tier two to do dailies for like kill 100 enemies with flamethrowers. And for mm. whatever weird reason, the game tossed me into a tier seven. And I was like, holy shit, I am not prepared for this. I don't know how to play. And I kept getting bodied. But by playing with these level 50s and understanding how he played, I learned the mechanics of the game. And then I'm now able to carry people in tier sevens myself. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from pros, and that's how I learned. Like, I get my ass whooped by people who are really good at something, and I learn really fast. Mm. That's how you learn, through the failures. You know, I, I learned through a lot of getting losing to people who are better than me, which is why I, I like the challenge of but my, having my to point, do things that are hard. My point in bringing that up is even playing with John on Hellifers 2, I think there are times where I genuinely surprise him. Like that one time where I killed a Bile Titan by myself while you and, <laughs> that, and uh, yeah. soon were <laughs> off doing your own thing. Yeah, me and Jacob were like, hey, you know what? We just needed you to act as bait. We'll go do everything else. That's fine. <laughs> You you were you kept saying like just 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 like loop loop the bile titan loop the bile titan find a rock and loop the bile titan and now it's like no nah, fuck I'm gonna kill it and I killed it. How did you kill a bile titan by yourself, buddy? I'm so proud uh, of you, right? Uh, Surprising, uh, isn't it? A lot of ammo dumps into the bile titan, and also I may have dropped a resupply right on top of it. So that oh, helped. Good that's aim. Skill, that's Holy skill. shit! Yeah, that is that's actual very skill. Impressive. That was complete luck. I was not aiming for him. It bounced off a rock and hit him. <laughs> Bro, that's the experience. Like, that's, 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 that's what I love about Helldivers 2. It's like, even when you try to do stuff, some crazy fucking shit happens. And, like, it's funny. Even if it's not what you expect, it's funny. Like, when you when a stratagem takes a weird bounce and it lands on one of your own guys, you're not mad about that because it's fucking funny. Do you guys have those Malevolon Creek veteran caps? No. <laughs> no, I have seen those though. I have fought on there actually. I do have that cap. Damn it! <laughs> I've no. There's like actual like hats you can buy that say Malevolent Creek Veteran. <laughs> oh shit! No way, really? Yeah, Dude. I want one now. I don't. I don't listen. That's a little too close to stolen valor for me. Like I get the joke, <laughs> but like, come on, respect our armed service men. Like, come on. <laughs> I get ha ha funny meme, but I don't know. That, that to me, that's just like it's too much. Uh, well, I, I feel mean, like it's fine. I mean, this might shock you, but I'm not actually a platelet, John. I just <laughs> Come on, that's anime. Oh my god, I never brought up my point. Alex, please don't ever wear hats because you are so funny looking with hats. I have another <laughs> friend that whenever he wears hats, I can't help but fucking die of laughter. Hold on, you're gonna see the real thing for just a second. Oh god, I don't oh no, be... please don't. Yep, he's doing no. it. He's doing it. Yep, I've seen this multiple That's times. so dumb! You look so dumb in hats! <laughs> oh my god. You know how some people just, like, they wear hats and they just look absolutely fucking dumb? That's mm. you. <laughs> I would argue that's just me anytime I'm just existing. <laughs> oh, the self-burns, here they come again. <laughs> but anyway, you know what? I see that you didn't write anything down, so I guess he's not talking about anything. Yeah, okay, well, uh, John, what do you want to talk I, about? I forgot to, okay? I forgot to. I have I have stuff I can talk about. For example, um, did anyone see the new Godzilla movie yet? There's a no. new one? No. Yes, the new, the new the uh, new Warner Brothers uh, Godzilla movie. The um, third, fourth one? I don't, I lost count because it's there's like Godzilla the King Kong movies as Kong, well. right? Yeah, Godzilla X Kong. Um... No, I'm not. TLDR, they find more monkeys. Uh, <laughs> those monkeys are bad guys. So Godzilla and Kong have to team up and beat up a bunch of monkeys. So they spank those monkeys. It's a fun monkeys. movie. They it spank those monkeys around. They Godzilla actually do. Huh. I won't give any spoilers, but it's a fun movie. Um, Not a lot of uh, people bullshit. It's a lot more of the monster fights and cool fun. It's a dumb, fun movie. I fucking love it. A.K.A. the shipping name. It is. Listen, so. listen. Godzilla X Kong is not some furry shit I want to ever see. Never, ever show that shit to me. Oh, buddy, I've seen a lot of it. I do not want Don't the Godzilla see, please. Um, I will say, there, 
it caught me off guard with a couple of surprise things that I didn't expect, and I was very happy about it. I can't say anything yet. Not I won't say anything until like next month. But there there was a surprise couple of things in there that I was like, hey yo, I know this shit. <laughs> Especially if you're a old time watcher of Godzilla movies, it, it was like, it was fan service. It was straight up fan service because it referenced a lot of things. Orc, no, I don't want to ever. No, please. Godzilla X Mothra memes and art. I hate it. No, I hate it. I don't. I don't want this. I, I no. This is I, no, anyway. this has been a thing. A, been anyway. a thing for a long ass time. Uh, Mothra is Godzilla's big titty moth girlfriend. John's just like, no, nah, fuck this, I'm leaving. Fuck I'm leaving. He can't. I'm gonna go use the bathroom now. You guys, you guys can continue just talking about this stupid stuff. Okay, go ahead, John. Anyway. Uh, we can rapidly you. moving on. Can we please move on to anything else, Chinoda? Sure, what do you have? I, that's it. I, I've talked about everything oh, I already... had. Um, have you guys talked about Rooster Teeth closing down? No, I mean, it's kind of old news, but we can talk about it if you want. I mean, we didn't talk about it. Um, so yeah, I'm sure everyone and their mother knows by now Rooster Teeth, uh, shut down. I'm actually a little bit, a uh, little bit sad about it because, like, they were still providing some decent content, even though they've been on the downward stream for a long time. It, it was one of those <laughs> things where it was coming. Like they've been on a downward spiral for like the last decade. They they have, unfortunately. And it's one of those things you knew was coming, but like to see it actually happen, you're like, man, I didn't think the day would actually come, you know? So a little bit sad about that, even though they've. I mean, uh, it still hurts seeing them. I mean, yeah, they were a hugely influential and generational company, and uh, all that, and they produced a lot of good people from there. And they also produced a lot of people who were sketchy as hell. Yeah, as it turns but out that that's from like almost anything. You get good people and you get bad people. People just reveal I mean, their colors eventually. Don't. Don't get me wrong, like, I I kind of, I knew of Rooster Teeth, well, I've known of Rooster Teeth for a very long time. Um, obviously, I kind of got into them through Red versus Blue back in the day, um, yeah. I, as I think a lot of people did, especially if you were a Halo fan back then. Um, but I think about it, and, like, that and Ruby were, like, the two, only the two things about them that I remember. Like, I know they've made other stuff, and I, I'm obviously I know about Achievement Hunter, which is kind of its own thing, but still related to Rooster Teeth, but I, aside from Ruby and Red versus Blue, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you anything else they did outside of Achievement Hunter. No, that's fine. I mean, you were only into specific things, and that, that's all you care about, and you know what? That was the same for me. There was only yep. specific things that I uh, actually cared about, and even then, like, I eventually stopped following a lot of things a long time ago. I do have some good news, though. Uh, I don't know uh, if you heard, but they were planning on finishing off uh, um, Red vs. Blue with one final season. I, To be honest this... with you, I feel like that's also something else that's completely run its course. Oh I yeah, think yeah, ten no. years ago it was already done, and they used to, like should have just let it go. Um, well, I really enjoyed the Pizza Quest, so I I disagree with you there. Um, and Death Battle, uh, number one, I didn't even know that Death Battle was done by Rooster Teeth, and number two, I've they never even acquired seen a it. Single, I've never even seen a single episode of Death Battle. Really? Nope. Really surprised. You should check it out. I mean, there, there's some good fun ones. It's a lot of dumb fun things, but like. It's fun to watch. Sure. <laughs> um. Anyways, the final yes. uh season of Red vs. Blue Restoration, if I remember, uh, is what it's called. Is actually they confirmed like a um, couple days ago, actually, as of this recording, um, that they are finishing it up, like. Uh, mm -hmm. Bernie Burns uh, came back and they are very... Uh, he said, yeah, no, we're going to finish it up and call it quits. So, 
good news uh, in the at the end of it, like we are getting a finished something at the very least. So mm. I'm happy for and the OG OGs are coming back for it. So I'm very happy to hear that. Um, hoping it turns out really well. I hope the writing's great and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess good for the people that work on it that they actually get to have some closure on the series that kind of made them famous. Um, even though I feel like it's... Red, I haven't watched Red vs. Blue in pff, probably 10 years. No, I mean, that's fair. Eight, nine, yeah. 10 years. Um, I think it kind of jumped the shark a long time ago, so I just stopped caring about it. But, I mean, I guess it's it's a good thing that they get to come back and kind of finish off this thing that made them famous. I feel like you should uh, check out a uh, couple of the newer seasons. There is, like, some actual gold in there. It's not as good as the older seasons, but there is some gold in there that I, I feel mean, like you're missing out on. And one of my biggest criticisms of, like, what it was about, like, ten years ago or so was, like, I, I love the original, like, seasons of Red vs. Blue just because of how, like, ridiculous the humor was. Um, and I feel like they started to get away from that and they made it into this like action comedy. And I'm like, what? eh, it's not really what I want. What are we talking about? Red versus blue. Red versus blue, Rooster Teeth shutting down, uh confirmation of the final season uh going to be finished. Wait, red versus blue is still going on? Yes, yeah, bro. it is. Oh my god. It jumped Lord. the shark a long time ago, but it's still going on. I I haven't seen anything past like season three or whatever oh that's Damn. a shame you have missed out then like there's I... actually some really good stuff you missed out on i oh, he's doing oh. jamie stuff he, he's he's looking up yeah no i'm not looking up stuff i'm typing something for oh. our thumbnail maker so he understands what we talked about because i'm not an asshole no oh. would not write down what we talked about for our thumbnail maker which this week is actually going to be me, isn't Ida is on vacation. Um, I think that, I, I, honestly speaking, outside of like I want to say high school is when I stopped watching Red versus like Rooster Teeth stuff in general. Yeah, I think Rooster Teeth fell off a long time ago. I agree. Oh, agree. We 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 all agree on that. Um, they were basically once they got rid of Achievement Hunter, they kind of were a shell of its former self, in my opinion. Because I, I watch a lot of Achievement Hunter with um Gavin? Yeah. That, and, Gavin uh, I don't, Free. I don't remember the other guy. It was Michael. He was always funny because he was yelling at Gavin. Yeah, whoever that guy was. But, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Michael. Can I say so, Achievement Hunter really fell off when Ray left? Because Ray was funny as fuck. Yeah, Ray was yeah. great. I mean, he's doing his own thing. He's a he Twitch he's streamer doing, now, and he, he's doing very his own successful. Thing. And I, I watch him from time to time. He's still funny as fuck. Yeah, he just branched out on it on his own, and he made it. I'm very happy for him. Actually, I found out about Cursed Halo through his stream of it. That's when I first heard about Cursed Halo. <laughs> Holy shit! When That's he played great. it. All right, uh, I gotta leave soon, so I guess I'll just do one more, one more thing. I, I guess I can talk about. Okay. I want to talk about how much I hate online shopping. All right. Oh. So, I I don't want to sound like a boomer. You are okay, a boomer. boomer. Yeah, I wish I was a boomer. Then I'd be able to afford a house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You, no, no, no. You'd already have a house, buddy. I would have bought a house for a fucking loaf of bread, bro. Like, what the hell? <laughs> if I was a boomer. <laughs> you were only two years younger than me, my dude. <laughs> but, you know, I... I had this complaint um, about electronics back in the day. Mm. I hated ordering electronics online. Yes, you can order electronic equipment cheaper online, generally through Amazon or through online means like um, Newegg, stuff like that. And you can get it for like, you know, 10, 15, even up to 25% off if you order it online and you just wait a couple of days. I used to go to, do you guys know what Fry's Electronics is? Yeah, yes. also, I love that apparently, place. Apparently, boomer is a trigger word for my phone. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Um, so Fry's Electronics, for people who don't know, because I, I don't know if it's a 
nationwide thing or not in America, but <coughs> it's an electronics store that sells all things electronics from TVs to appliances to video um, game consoles and like PC stuff, right? Yeah, it's kind of like Best Buy. It's a bigger, it's like a warehouse version of Best Buy, yes. Yeah. Um, they shut down the only one that we had here in Washington a couple years ago, and it made me really sad because I used to go to Fry's all the time, like post high school to just like look at stuff, you know, look at these new keyboards. I want to test them out, see how they feel. Cause that's the thing about shopping online. That's something that a lot of people feared back in like the nineties with online shopping was one, giving out your credit card information, like over the phone. That's nuts. Who would do that? Yeah. Um, and then like, there was also the argument that, you know, online shopping would never pick up because you can't see the item. You don't know what you're going to get. And for the most part, thanks to very, uh, easy return policies it seems to have gone to the wayside but i find it more annoying that i have to buy and return things right and i think amazon is putting a stop to that now too like you can't do too many returns in a month or anything anymore they're 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 trying to curb that mm -hmm. yeah they are seriously making headways into uh stopping returns yeah and it's like super ass like because i'm buying been shit abusing online, it for dude. years yeah, yeah, people I... have been abusing. I can understand it from the corporation's perspective. Like, don't kill me for this, but I can understand. Like, people have been abusing it oh, hell a lot. Things. No, I get it because I, I'm not saying, Papa Bezos, please don't revoke my Amazon Prime. However, <laughs> I abuse the Amazon return policy quite a lot for um electronics because it's like i want to test these out i have 30 days to return them i'll use them for two weeks then i'm gonna return them then i'm gonna buy a different pair that's also 300 400 dollars and i'll use it you for mean two that weeks. one single month where you tested various year buds yes. <laughs> to see what was the best quality yes i i do and things what? like that that I, it's not exclusive to just earbuds i do that for a lot of electronics because i i did it at best buy i did it at target they all have generous return policies. But my point is, I because for those things, you can't really test out, you know, unless you take it home, you got to break it in and listen to it. Um, but for other electronics and goods, like for like a mouse or a keyboard or a headset, how does it feel if it's on my head for hours? You know, I just need to put it on and see how it feels. Uh, the quality for the equipment can come later, but you can't really test those when you online shop. And I miss the good old days when you could go into a store and do that, where I can just mm -hmm. be like, oh, how does it feel to use this? To me, that's important. I don't want to order a chair, a $500 fucking chair, sit on it and absolutely fucking hate the damn thing because now it's going to be super annoying to return it. Yeah, and you've already spent the money, so even if they give you the return, it's still going to take time for it to appear in your account again. Yeah, and it's like... I hate that everyone was wary of the situation that we were in right now, 30 years ago, and we didn't fucking learn. I think, like... Honestly... So I think it's fine buying some stuff online, like when you're talking about, like, say, physical media, like Blu-rays or DVDs. Buying that online is fine because you kind of know what you're going to get, yeah. right? But stuff yeah. where it's it's stuff you have to live with for a long time, like John said, a chair, especially a, a chair like an office chair, like I think all of us are sitting in. Like, you might be sitting in that for hours and hours at a time. You should be able to try that out before you buy it. Yeah. Or keyboards, how they feel, or, how they sound. Or when they headsets. Type. Headsets, how they feel on your head, you know? And yeah. it's not a huge problem because the return policies, well, I mean, Amazon makes it super annoying to return things in general. Like, there's electronics that I buy, and it's just like, is there anything wrong with it? I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't like it. They're like, well, we're not going to, you have to pay for shipping then. And I'm like, okay, there is something wrong with it. <laughs> now they'll yeah. give me, a, they'll return it for free. Say that, that's really? why I go to Dollar General. Go to Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm gonna be honest. That I've never is been... one of the reasons why I love going to mom and pop uh, tech stores. A lot of them have shut down, especially throughout COVID. But I used to go to those whenever I needed like anything electronic, like even I... cables. I just <laughs> went to those, and they were so amazing for it. The better prices, better quality products normally. And also, and you get to you know the people. Know, so one time I went to a mom and pop store because I did not know the name of a specific USB. It's the printer USB. Do you know what that USB is called? It's a USB Type B. Uh, I forget what the the last part of it is. Alex is right. It's called a Type B. I didn't know that. 
I don't there's know a, how there's to a, there's look. There's like a suffix to it. I forget what it's called though. But I didn't what know what fuck? that was called. Alex knows all I didn't this. know how to describe it. So I went to a mom and pop electronics store and told them, and they knew what I was talking about, and they knew more mean, about it than I, I did this. at the time. So it's like I miss those type of interactions. I miss being able to test things before you buy them. Like I, I hate that we've gone to online shopping where. We're just okay with getting subpar things. And then, oh. not to mention... What the fuck do you mean I know the bullshit? I got the <laughs> fucking certs, my dude. He <laughs> does. Man, pulled up his certs. Good God. <laughs> like, I, I would rather go into a physical store and pay the 20-30% markup just because I can test it out there. And mm. the return policy there is pretty simple. At a store, there's no fucking shipping fee i don't have to drop it off at a spit like one time I, I was returning something for amazon it's like oh you for some reason i couldn't return it at ups i had to go all the way to a fucking whole foods to return <laughs> what it. yes for some that's item and also, that's what i mean like they, they want to make it harder for you to return things i had to go to a fucking whole foods to return my amazon product <laughs> like i could always go to the ups I, like, one of the options was, oh, you could return it at UPS, but you have to pay the shipping and handling, which is, like, 11 bucks, and buy mm. a box. And I was like, what? No, I don't want to fucking do that. It's like, well, you can do it for free, but you can only do it if you travel all the way to Whole Foods. And it's like, the, you know, UPS, five minutes away from me. Whole Foods, 25 minutes away from me. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's so annoying. That is so annoying. Why? It is It is nice, though, with especially with Amazon, that a couple of days ago, I needed a new USB-C cable. and I got it the very next day. <laughs> yeah, there are nice things about online They're shopping. Good. And, yeah. But my point is, like, like for example, these. These Bose Quiet Comforts that I have, right? Not, hashtag not sponsored by Bose. I just like these. You, don't you mean like this? Exactly. <laughs> Let me the tell quiet. you the story about how I bought these, okay? I went to Vegas. My favorite pair of earphones broke while I went to Vegas. On my way back from Vegas, I was like, fuck. I don't want to be in a four and a half hour flight without music or watching my phone or anything. So what did I see? I see a Best Buy vending machine selling these. So what did I do? I bought it for at I'm full sorry. price. A Best Buy vending machine? Yes. A yes, Best Buy they vending do exist. machine. They exist. What the fuck? So I bought these so I could have them for the flight, right? Because I'm not paying for $20 for the shitty AirPods or airplane like uh, headphones that they give you that barely work. Like, no, fuck that. And that only work on the airplane? <laughs> so then, you know, here I am trying out the quiet comforts. I'm like, wow, this noise canceling is amazing. This The sound quality is pretty decent. It's a pretty good setup. I like these. So what did I do when I got back? I immediately returned it to my Best <laughs> Buy. <laughs> because fuck paying 275 for a pair of headphones. And then I went and bought it for like $200 somewhere else. <laughs> but point was... They may have not gotten full price for these, but they still got a sale. They yeah. still made money at the end of the day because I was able to sample this product before I bought it. Now, I have a personal issue with buying things at full price because, you know, I'm broke. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I legit just... thought I legit thought John was going to say I have a problem with it because I'm Asian. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, hey! same difference. Just because, <laughs> wow. just because I always know a guy. <laughs> I got a guy for that. I know a guy. <laughs> I got a buddy who does that. I got a buddy who can hook you up with that. I got deals. We know flippers. <laughs> but my point is being able to experience that and having a box store physically there, like it made the sale. At the end of the day, if I did not have the experience of trying these out at full price and being able to return it at a box store, I would never bought these ever. Yeah. I wouldn't have spent the money anyway. So it made a sale. It wasn't the most 100% markup for their sale like because they wanted full retail, but they still made a sale regardless. They still got my money at the end of the day. And I just wish that... <laughs> I wish that physical stores still existed. Like, it, I hate buying things online only to get it and be like, this doesn't work for what I need it to do, you know? Yeah. I also hate that... Do you guys know what dropshipping is? Yeah. Yeah. I hate dropshippers. I, I hate that... 90% of what you see on Amazon's recommended is just drop shipped items that you could get off of freaking Alibaba. Do you want to explain it maybe for, briefly for people who might not know what drop shipping is? Okay, uh, so drop go. shipping is the new side hustle, a uh, quote unquote side hustle that people are freaking making other people pay money to do where you can learn you can earn $500 a month by doing literally nothing. Just pay me $500 for this course. 
<laughs> but uh, it's a side hustle that consists of buying cheaply made products off of um, basically the manufacturers of like a, a manufacturing director website, like wholesaler, like Alibaba, where you can buy like, here are these, I don't know, teapots that you can buy for five cents per teapot and you can resell it to Amazon as a store for like $10 for a teapot. Like that's just p something that people do. Some people have found some very good success being drop shippers. Uh, I don't doubt that, that you can. However, I hate drop shipped items. Cause it's like, have you ever scrolled through Amazon and looked at an item where it's like, this is the exact same freaking icon that they're using for these exact same items, but they're priced differently. Yeah, Those are drop I've seen it items. multiple times. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, they're all low quality built stuff. They're all cheap stuff, but because they're cheap, they're expendable and you save money by buying a ton of them at the same time. Then you just move the inventory. They yeah, basically... like with dropship stuff, it, it's stuff that's almost always bought like in massive bulk. That's how they yeah. make money off of it. That's why it's so cheap. Because when you yeah. buy more of it, the more money you'll save on shipping for everyone. Because that's yeah. the most expensive thing is the transportation of items from the factories to here, to the warehouses where you're going to hold it. And the beauty of drop shipping is that you don't have to send it to your house. You can send it to a warehouse and have mm -hmm. them hold your stock. But basically, it's a way to get rid of, it's a way for factories to get rid of dead inventory that's basically inventory that's not making them active money right now for other people to hold on to it that becomes their own inventory. It's a super ingenious way to scam other people out of buying cheap shit because, you know, Amazon and Walmart and stuff uh, have dropshippers now too. So does Etsy. Etsy has a lot of dropshippers on it now. A lot of online shopping for goods and items. So have does a lot fucking of Target. Items. Yeah, Target Online has dropshipped items now. They, they all just like, they're all in on the con. And you just buy low quality things and it's super crap. I hate it. Little bit of sidetrack to uh this related. Um, do you guys know how Timu does its business model? Uh what they do is no. they wait until enough people buy a certain product, then they make it and send it. Yeah, I knew that. And the FTC is actually looking into this. Um it's not illegal. Yeah, it's it's not illegal, it's, but the it's business practice is dubious. You know why it's not illegal? You know how I know it's not illegal? Mass drop does the exact same thing, but for more expensive items. What's or mass I drop? I guess it's called drop. So it is a website that as long as X amount of people buy this item at a certain price, you can get it at a discount. Hmm. But oh. a certain amount of people have to buy this product first. So like we need 500 people to buy like this headset before we can sell it for like this, like this $500 headset that's normally $500 per pair, you can buy for 350, but we have to have 500 people buy it. And then you'll get it. Yeah. That's what the website does. I think so. I, and I think the reason why this is, I don't think it's going to ever be like made illegal is because like, you know how a lot of, um, um, like crowdfunding things work, right? Um, yeah. where, there's there's pe there's things where people who are doing crowdfunding um will say hey we're going to do this thing and if we get to this much um uh certain amount uh sold or you know this much of our budget we're also going to put this stuff in it's the same kind of concept you have to get right. to a certain Literally level what of I sales did. before something is unlocked for people to buy yeah. Or literally what i did with uh so, my oban star racers uh 15th uh, anniversary edition so i got a leaf like right now however okay. my closing okay. thoughts on this whole like drop shipping and all this random bull crap i'm explaining you something to you i had a backpack that i bought maybe five years ago from amazon the, uh, that now i i look at it i didn't realize it was a drop shipped item five years ago but it's a drop shipped item because they don't make it anymore that backpack was my riding backpack for a long time. It literally disintegrated on me two weeks ago. Oh, like, I, I took it off and the straps just literally just went pfft. like, I'm serious. What it was like hell? crumpled like paper. Okay. To Wait, how long have you had it? I had it for like five years. Oh, yeah. But, but the straps, they're fucking nylon straps, bro. They just disintegrated. It was weird. Now, I have no idea what happened. However, I will say I have a now my new riding backpack is my old fishing backpack, which is my old backpack from middle school. Okay, <laughs> this is a 20 year old Jan Sport backpack. 
This I thing, have a Jansport backpack too. This this backpack I used in middle school, like over 15 so years ago. Okay, this thing is nasty and ratty as hell. It's got it's stained pink from all still my still works sweat, though, doesn't it? Okay, nope, still works. Straps solid as fuck. I used it in middle school. Then in high school, I turned it into my fishing backpack, and I've been using it as my fishing backpack with all my tackle and all that stuff to move my fishing shit. And now it's my riding backpack again. <laughs> because, and it's still holding up just as strong. So I'm just saying. Dude, the aggregation bought... of quality of items uh, because well, of that's capitalism the difference between, is... like, mm. drop-shipped items that are made cheaply on the down low for Amazon and all these other resellers, right? That's the difference in quality. Yeah. A drop-shipped item, if you buy that, it's not lasting more than a couple of years at most. And that's if you don't use it or you don't use it like it's not heavily used or abused. My Jansport yeah. backpack literally has been through hell and back. I've yeah. used it so much. To do I throw it around. I don't give a fuck about that thing. It is holding up strong. I don't give a fuck. It fights me. <laughs> so that's, you know, again, I don't want to sound like a boomer, but holy shit, man. They don't make them like they used to. I hate drop shipped items. I hate online shopping. Bring back box stores. I will pay. I will finally. I will be the new generation of buyers. I will buy more shit at expensive prices just because I can touch them and feel the quality. Peace That's out. honestly one of the reasons why things are still saying, "Yeah, bye, John. Get out okay. of here. I'm out. Go pick up wifey. Bye. All right, bye, no, John. Tomorrow. Bye. I'm going. I'm going out to eat Korean barbecue and then whatever. My, it's from my friend's get birthday. drunk as fuck. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know yeah. what you were planning because I talked to you this morning while you were drunk as fuck. Oh shit! I forgot about that. I, forgot yeah, you I joined in, in on there. that call. Uh, all right. Bye, chat. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, Bye John. John. See, that's what happens when you actually come to our Discord server. You get drunk John at like 5 in the morning in our voice chats. Not just 5 in the... He was literally like throughout the night. Bro. <laughs> no, like at 10.30, I think it was, or 11. 11 to like 6.30, me and Jake were in, were in the voice chat. We were just chilling, getting drunk. <laughs> I wake up. Uh, like, I go to sleep seeing... us. Uh, uh, might... I go to sleep. Uh, I, I I read them uh, uh, doing this. I wake up. I see them in the call. I'm like, the fuck? I join and they're <laughs> they are pissed drunk. <laughs> and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what happened? Trust me, I, I was in the I was in there with them and they <laughs> <laughs> they were blasted. A little, a little. Um. I mean, that's all I have, and I don't know if you have anything else. I mean, there was one thing that John had listed here that I was kind of keen on talking about, but I might save it for um for maybe next month because it'll still be relevant. It's not like a like a current event kind of thing. Sure. Um, I mean, it was about like AI and stuff. I don't. For all we know, it'll be even crazier in a month. So. Oh, the um, how there's so much more AI on the internet now. Yeah, like AI generated content, but I, I think yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait no. until he's here because it's something that he really wanted to talk about. I want to. Um, I want to talk about that as well because I I have a lot to say about it. We'll probably save it for next month then, because um, like I say, it, it's not like it won't be uh, out of date by then anyway. Um, I mean, I unless you have anything else to say, I think I'll go ahead and just end the uh, end the stream now. Um, yeah. No. I'm good. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for uh, stopping by to watch us tonight. <clears throat> I do hope you enjoyed uh, this three hour or about three hour. Uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. Craziness. Sure. We'll go with that. Um, Regular WTF episode. <laughs> yeah. Just, just your average WTF episode. Three hours of us just ranting and raving about all kinds of things. Um, like I said at the very beginning, of uh this episode uh please like comment subscribe if you like what you saw here and you want to see more it really helps us out we're we're making a, a huge push towards uh 1k hopefully by the end of the year um also uh look down below for links to where you can join us on uh twitter on discord definitely join our discord server if you want to ask us questions that appear here on our uh wtfs um, or if you just want to interact with the whole community, it's fun as hell yeah. in there. Like I said, sometimes you stop by the voice chat at five o'clock in the morning and John is in there pissed drunk. Um, and then you never know what you're going to get. Um, what else? Um, 
tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, if you're watching this live, um, I will be uh, back with some more Helldivers 2 on stream. Um, and if you're I'll watching, be there. And, and Shinoda will be there. I don't know who else is going to be there. Um, probably John. Uh, no, John says he's probably not going to join us tomorrow night. But I think we have a couple of our followers Oof. that are going to join us. Um, that's also something you can do if you join our Discord server. You can join us uh, when we have streams if you want to play games with us. Um, um, but yeah, uh, that's going to be it for us. Um, I, as always, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, Shinoda. <laughs> Hold on. We are We are two days away. Two days the holo tuber. Uh, well, she's actually, literally a holo tuber. <laughs> she holo live is literally a thing now. Like literally holo live. Um, if you are watching this, the edited version that comes out on Monday, new episode of or the first episode of the new Spice Wolf is already out, and I'm super excited about that. We eating good, boys. We eating oh, good. <laughs> man, the spring season. We eating good. We eating good. Check out our spring preview if you haven't already. Anyway, bye.